April 12th, the first day that London shops are able to reopen for business, for in-person business. Uh, and so I thought it would be appropriate for us to really commemorate and celebrate this a significant milestone on the path to everything returning to normalcy and all of this really being permanently behind us uh, by going to London Live to visit with some of our favorite shops, to check in with everyone, see how they're doing, and see all that we have to look forward to. And so join me as we visit some of my favorite places in London uh, and also while we walk the streets a little bit as we walk down German Street, the Piccadilly Arcade, Savile Row, uh, and actually see, uh, you know, London reopening and people out on the streets again. So uh, join me for today's piece. Uh, it couldn't be more appropriate that the first stop in today's tour through London on uh, April 12th as everything's reopening is Davidoff of London. Of course, if I were fortunate enough to be in London, this would be my first stop uh, to pick up a few cigars uh, inevitably for the trip. Uh, and it's so great to see you, Eddie, uh, back in the shop. But you know, you've been working uh, during this entire kind of shutdown, but back in the stop, finally dressed in a suit and with customers. Oh, thank you so much, Kirby. Hearing your sweet voice and seeing you in my humidor again, uh, nothing beats that feeling. Uh, we've been through a real long, it feels like a very long lockdown through the winter months. Today we have snow and sun, perhaps a metaphor for what we've been through, and we're delighted to open our doors again for, for all customers to come and visit us. Now, of course, I mean, you know, Davidoff of London, like so many of these shops kind of in and around London have been forced to, um, to really kind of innovate and evolve. And I know for, for you all, that was launching a new website and to really kind of extend your reach to your customers. Uh, but as great of a job as I think Davidoff and everyone's really done in adapting, nothing can really replace being able to meet your customers, you know, in person, firsthand and for Davidoff welcoming them into the humidor. Oh, you're, you're hundred percent right, Kirby. It's a unique experience uh, for us as well as for the customers, uh, especially in the world of cigars. You cannot recreate the learning experience about what your customer wants, their palate, uh, what they think of particular cigars until you're face to face in the humidor with them. Uh, and we hope the customers also feel the same way and will will come and visit us soon. Well, absolutely. I mean, anyone that's in London, uh, Davidoff in London should be uh, uh, one of the first stops. Uh, but, you know, back to the humidor, I mean, you know, it's, of course, you know, it's so easy to kind of browse your selection online. The new website is really exceptional, but still Thank nothing you. quite surpasses or replaces, you know, that kind of sensorial experience of touching the cigars, smelling them, uh, and being able to experience the humidor that way, uh, which of course is one of the great joys of being able to visit Davidoff of London. Oh, I, I, I agree, Kirby. If I could bottle the aroma that's wafting around me as we speak uh, and sell it, I'm sure there's a few of us out there who would pay good money for that. Uh, you know, every time I walk into the humidor, getting my nose into the cigars and really getting that beautiful fermentation aroma uh, nothing beats it. You know that. So what's new? I know that, uh, you know, uh, you guys uh, and everyone have really been, you know, working fast away, you know, over these last few months. Is there any, are there any new additions to the humidor uh, that we have, uh, we have to look forward to? Well, yes, uh, actually the, the most recent ones are uh, a pair of oxen, if that's the correct plural for ox. Uh, Davidoff, of course, they do their normal Zodiac limited edition for the Chinese uh, New Year, and that was released about two, three months ago. This beauty here, it's, it's in the cellophane. I hope the reflection is okay. It's a, a 60, 6 by 60 ring gauge, Year of the Ox from Davidoff. The size says it all, and it's one of their better ones. I mean, all of their Zodiac production has been beautiful. Uh, sometimes they take a few years to develop. Sometimes they're ready out of the box. This one was ready out of the box. So I've loved this. Uh, and of course, a few days ago, we received the first Cuban uh, nod to the Chinese Zodiac. So uh, that's also Year of the Ox. And if I may just reach across here, I'm going to thank you very much. Everyone's jumping out of the, uh, the Zodiac bandwagon. Well, that's it. Uh, so this is the Year of the Ox. It's called the Primavera. It comes in a box of 18. Uh, 8,888 of these uh, have been produced. Uh, again, eight is a very important number for the Chinese, so I think that's the significance there. 
Uh, I believe the global launch was a collaborative effort across two or three cities, but notably one of them was Beijing, if I'm not mistaken. Um, you may or may not know, but uh, Habanos now has a significant shareholder in, in a couple of Chinese enterprises. I just want to show you the, the size again. This is a, a 48 ring gauge, which is, sits between a 47 Churchill and a 49 double Corona. The length is, I would say, probably just over six inches. So it's getting close to a Churchill. Uh, and I've had the pleasure of smoking one a couple of days ago. It's beautiful. It's a traditional Hoyo blend, light to medium, uh, very well constructed. So these would be the two newest arrivals, I would say, in our humidor. Well, that's exciting. It's exciting to see, of course, new cigars uh, arriving. And, you know, you always have kind of your old classics that you enjoy going back to. I just smoked a, a Trinidad uh, Fundadora for the first time. I'm probably saying that wrong. Uh, you know, great kind of classic production. Uh, but these regional and kind of annual releases are, you know, really kind of would make it fun uh, as being able to try new things and, um, you know, discover something new. Yes. Uh, and occasionally, if you're really lucky and you're wandering through Mexico, I might find one of your favorites, Kirby. I'm still looking out for them. <laughs> oh, you haven't smoked it yet. Uh, well, um, there we go. So hopefully we'll be able to enjoy that uh, in person. I'm kind of looking to return to, to London sometime mid-July, but, you know, as with so many things, it's kind of hard to know or anticipate anything for certain. But uh, what can be anticipated for certain is that Davidoff of London is back open, the doors are open, and you're welcoming customers back into probably one of the most famous humidors, uh, at least in Europe. Thank you, Kirby. We're, we're super excited, and we're back to our six-day-a-week schedule, 9.30 to 6 o'clock. Uh, the website will support anything out of hours, but nothing beats uh, walking into our shop. We can't yet sample in store, which is my one regret. We're, we are trying to be cautious and respectful of everyone's safety. Uh, but everything else, it's good to go. And we have Cafe Murano and Franco's. They're tables outside as of today. So a customer can walk in, uh, relying on clement weather, have a cigar and a coffee outside, and, and enjoy St. James's. Ah, that's amazing. And hopefully these are one of the things that we kind of keep with us, is the ability to have more outdoor dining space where one can enjoy a cigar. So uh, that's great news. And, uh, you know, always in good form, Eddie. Uh, it's so great to see you. Um, you know, kind of best of luck and congratulations at being able to, to be back open. And please do uh, send my regards to your father. Thank you so much, Kirby. Uh, I know he sends his warmest regards to you as well. He's apologetic. He couldn't be on the, on the video with us today. Uh, and, of course, from all of us here in Davidoff, we send you our warmest regards, our best wishes uh, to you, your family, and we cannot wait to see you. I hope it's sooner than July, but when you do come, we will know that COVID is truly vanquished. Truly vanquished. Uh, here, here. Uh, thank you so much, Eddie, and uh, look forward to seeing you soon. Here we are in front of the Piccadilly Arcade, one of the most important shopping districts in London for the well-dressed man. Uh, I mean, between German Street, the Piccadilly Arcade, and Savile Row, uh, really a, a man can get everything he needs uh, to be properly dressed. Uh, now, uh, just on the corner here on German Street, I mean, I noticed that Hilditch and Key is has totally closed its doors. The shop is empty. Uh, and it should serve as an important reminder to all of us uh, that if you appreciate quality craftsmanship and tradition, uh, it's really important to support uh, these historic institutions, these stores uh, that have been around for decades, uh, for generations, and in some cases, really even over a century, uh, helping support uh, the well-dressed. So uh, Piccadilly Arcade, one of my favorite places. Uh, we just finished up at Davidoff of London. Uh, let's go inside the Piccadilly Arcade and visit two of my favorite stores, Bud Shirt Makers and Benson and & Clegg. Of course, we're dropping into the Piccadilly Arcade, uh, and there's no place more associated with the Piccadilly Arcade than Bud Shirtmakers, uh, really kind of a, a mainstay uh, of the British establishment, especially in traditional clothing for such a long time. And uh, we're joined today by a chairman of Bud Shirtmakers, uh, Stephen Murphy. Uh, Stephen, thank you so much for joining us. It's got to be so exciting to finally be back in the shop and welcoming customers back in. Kirby, you said it. Absolutely delighted. You know, we've... we've uh seeing familiar faces again. Um, the shop has got life in it again. We, we love it, absolutely love it. But we've been working behind the scenes, let me tell you, to get open in the first place, make sure we've got uh, everything that customers need 
when they walk in the door. Well, I mean, of course, I've seen and I follow Bud Shirt Makers on Instagram and have seen that, uh, you know, Andy and the entire team have been uh, certainly uh, very active, uh, even while the shop's been closed. Uh, have you been able to continue to service your bespoke customers during all of this? We, we have, miraculously. We've been doing some Zoom calls and, um, and for customers, really, who we have a pattern and they haven't changed too much during lockdown. Uh, then um, they've been calling us up to, to, uh, to get topped up on their shirt needs. But most people are now coming in, they, they like to see us in person. So uh, that's really what it's all about. It's that personal service. Absolutely. I mean, that is what London is so famous for is, um, you know, just that personalized service and just the caliber. I mean, Andy Rowley, of course, who's, you know, been, you know, I mean, he's a legend kind of in, in the classic menswear uh, space. And, uh, you know, personalities like that, you know, you really only find in London and only, you know, from the heritage, you know, shops like Bud Shirtmaker. Yeah, I know. It's true. He may be, he, I may be the chairman, but I'm his apprentice, quite frankly. I, I come in on Saturdays and when we're on special days and, and just listen to him and, and he teaches me all the time, you know, so um, that's why I love it, quite frankly. Him and Mr. Butcher. So yeah. what else have you been working on? I mean, you know, it's April. We're opening up really kind of just in time for the summer season. Uh, and so how are, how are you looking to kind of kit out your customers as they uh, look to be able to travel again? Well, we've got sort of the Safari linen shirt, which has um, been very popular. So we've got a couple of new colors in that. Um, so it's a, a shirt jacket. And um, and that's that's been... Um, come back in our in a khaki green again that we got back in a wonderful cloth wonderful linen for that um, so slightly heavier weight so you can wear uh, a t-shirt underneath it and travel very comfortably um, we've got a Giro Inglese uh, cloth coming in uh, we call it the Riviera I, I hope we're down in the Riviera to wear it let me tell you but um, um, that's that's also um, uh, that'll be released shortly um, you know, super lightweight honeycomb uh, that was developed really for uh, the colonial wear uh, by the British Empire. So we've, we've brought some of those cloths back in a blue and a white. And um, we've got a seersucker as well. So we've got a seersucker cloth, which is, it's somewhere between formal and, and, uh, and casual. It's a, a super lightweight cloth, as you know, but it's a, um, we've got a, we put a formal uh, cuff on it. So we've got a double cuff on it. So Something interesting, a little twist, yeah. Absolutely, and you know, what's so great about Bud, of course, is, um, you know, you have to look no farther than just your archive uh, to really kind of pull out inspiration for a lot of these pieces, and it's that authenticity and that quality and that craftsmanship and the tradition, of course, uh, that really make uh, all of the fairs from uh, Bud so, so exceptional. Yeah, I know, it's true. I, um, you, when you go upstairs in the store here, you know, you can pull out one of 4,000 patterns old patterns from, from customers and if you ask the cutters have you seen this collar before or you know have you seen this cuff before they'll pull out a pattern and we've made it for someone you know 20, 30, 40, 50 years ago. Uh, we have that human archive uh, in, in Mr. Butcher and, uh, and Darren and James as well, a, a more contemporary archive so it's great. Well it's such a vault of kind of traditional British um, you know, kind of dressing and British style. I'm actually, you know, in honor of, uh, you know, kind of returning to London virtually today, I'm wearing my bespoke Bud Shirtmakers uh, shirt also. And, uh, you know, again, just the, uh, the kind of the understated elegance of, you know, the collar and the proportions uh, really are something that uh, I enjoy so much about Bud. Well, we look, we work very hard in it behind the scenes. We're like the, the swan that looks serene on the water, but underneath it all, you've got the you know, the girls in the workroom in Andover, and you've got all the care and attention that goes in upstairs in the, in the cutting room. So, yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm so chuffed you're wearing a bud shirt. We I really love that. I'm actually wearing, I'm wearing the, the faux, we, we, we did some knitwear with H.G. Lockie and Sons, so I'm wearing the, I'm, I'm too casual today because I actually wasn't expecting to be on camera, but I'm wearing our faux turtleneck, which I quite like. It's, it's just a, a length on that faux turtleneck that just goes over the, just above your collar, so it's nice in a jacket. So apologies, but Andy's coming up now, having having looked after a customer downstairs. Thank you very much. Yeah, looking uh, looking smart as always. A British smart, you know. Yeah, he, de he definitely looks the part. I'd love to hand over to him for a minute, Kirby, if that's okay. Yeah, absolutely. Well, Mr. Rowley, I mean, it's so great to see you back in the shop. I I, I can't imagine it has come soon enough. It's great to be back. Um, 
two months off is a wonderful thing, but you sort of get a little bit itchy that you want to get back at the coal face, you know. I can only imagine. I mean, and especially for a shop like Bud, I mean, uh, Mr. Murphy was, of course, telling me that you guys have been able to continue to service your clients. I mean, of course, through the online shop uh, and then just dealing direct with your bespoke clientele. But nothing really replaces, you know, that personalized service that London is so famous for and being able to walk into the shop, have someone like you uh, advise them, uh, show them selections. And so I imagine for someone like you that's been, you know, doing this, you know, for such a long time, it's got to be nice to be back. Um, well, the, I was saying to a customer we've had earlier, the lifeblood of it is that you see people and then you get your energy from people. So to converse and to talk and to swap stories and to advise them what's good for them and what isn't, in actual fact, it sort of makes you more lively. Yeah, indeed, indeed. Uh, and it's such a cornerstone. I mean, that kind of that back and forth, you know, that collaboration and being able to actually, uh, you know, to, to you know, be consulted and advised personally. I mean, that's why people travel all the way to London, you know, to meet with their shirt makers, to meet with their shoemaker or their bespoke tailor. It just can't be replicated uh, over over Zoom or uh, over the phone, you know, even though that certainly has kind of helped bridge the gap, you know, during these periods where we haven't been able, been able to travel. Uh, nothing replaces uh, actually being able to walk down the Piccadilly Arcade, you know, stroll into Bud Shirt Baker and actually, you know, to see all of you. Um, well, well, the idea is in selling or in life in the West End is that you don't make a sale. Your idea is to make a customer. So if you make a personal link with the customer and get them to trust your integrity, and then you've got a customer for life rather than just a sale. And that's what the West End's meant to be. It's meant to be more informal and more friendly, but at the end of the day, we're here to sell stuff. Well, I mean, we all have to remain in business, and that's why, you know, hopefully as these lockdowns are being lifted, you know, customers and kind of patrons of, uh, of all of these stores, you know, really enthusiastically go back to support them. But again, you know, the cornerstone, of course, has been that personalized level of service, uh, you know, that trust in the relationship uh, that, you know, is really not transactional, as you kind of pointed out. Uh, it's one of the things that I, of course, have really enjoyed uh, about kind of all my shopping in and around the St. James's area uh, is that with these historic uh, stores, you know, these heritage stores, um, you know, like Bud, of course, and, and, and Davidoff of London and at Benson and Clegg and at Floors, I mean, you know, those experiences, those uh, relationships are really uh, pretty unique in this world. Well, you get a warmth and you, and you get a history of the West End, which we carry with us and then pass on to the generation. Um, and Mr. Chalmers, who was here from 1930 to 1980, he taught Mr. Butcher and myself what the West End was about and how important it is and what to do and what not to do. And then we're passing it on now to the next generation. We've got a young James in the shop. And talking of the modern world, or with Mr. Butcher and I aren't that really much aware of, without it, it would have been difficult to survive the last year, I think, because um, when Mr. Murphy came here, we didn't have an email address. So I've, while I've been off, I've been coming in maybe one or two days a month just to take care of orders for customers, get them sent out and get them made to keep the home fires burning. But with Kieran downstairs, he's got a thing which you might be familiar with, I, I wasn't, called live chat. And so if a customer goes on the website, he can actually speak to them and advise them what they would like and what they wouldn't like. And there was some guy, I think the week before last, bought 10 bespoke shirts. That's amazing. So to be open when you're shut has, has been a bit of a blessing, you know. Absolutely. Well, nothing, I mean, nothing can really replace that experience of traveling to London and being able to walk in the shop. Uh, but it is great to see uh, that kind of during these times where we haven't been able to do that, you know, these traditional stores that have been open for over a century, you know, really evolving and, and extending their level of service uh, kind of into people's living rooms or offices around the world. Well, I, th I think the idea of any traditional business is you have to keep firmly rooted in the past, but you have to embrace the future and move forward as well. And when I came in today, the first thing I did was I popped out and walked up and down the arcade and just to see all the people in the shops there ready to trade and get everything ready, it's quite uplifting. Absolutely. Well, uh, we couldn't be more excited to see uh, Bud's doors back open to customers. Of course, uh, anyone that's in London or in England, 
course, uh, make sure you drop by Bud. Uh, refreshing your selection of ties and pocket squares, maybe order a few new, a few new shirts. And uh, hopefully, uh, before too long, I'll be back in London and able to see all of you again. Yeah, it's, it's been too long to see you. I mean, we were saying last year it'd be great to see you again, and then this lot happened. So hopefully everything will calm down and the world will get back to normal. And by, I think by autumn, everything hopefully will be firing on all cylinders. Yeah, I think so. I mean, this is, uh, you know, it's a very important first step to have London, you know, reopening. Um, and uh, and shops uh, able to again receive customers. I think uh, restaurants are open for outside dining, uh, and then will be open for indoor dining in about a month's time. And so you know these are uh, very important uh, steps, albeit you know small steps in some ways. Uh, but certainly it is uh, means that we're on the path of uh, uh, in the right direction. Yeah, the, well the West End's a vibrant place, isn't it? With all the galleries and the restaurants and the theatres. Bit by bit, as those start to open, I think then we will get back to the state of what we consider normal. In, in, in a certain way, it's rather nice to appreciate it all the more, not having had it. Yeah, no, there's no question that uh, we will uh, certainly not take for granted uh, the shops. And, you know, unfortunately, I mean, many shops haven't, haven't survived. I mean, there's many, uh, you know, Hilditch and Key right at the end of the Piccadilly Arcade. You know, Reese was telling me is uh, closed, it's empty. We can't take for granted uh, these shops, and that's why I think it's important for, you know, those that really do appreciate quality craftsmanship and tradition, you know, to really support uh, these stores because, of course, you know, without customers, they don't exist. Uh, and, um, that's the point. And that tradition, yeah. you know, needs to be supported uh, by those uh, who appreciate it. Well, this morning, we've, since we've opened, we haven't stopped. So we've had customers in from when we opened up until now, non-stop. So touch wood, things are on the up. That's great news. Well, don't let us take any of more of your time. Uh, thanks for letting us kind of check in and it's great to see everyone is, uh, is, uh, is you know, doing well. Yep, great to see you, thank you. Uh, so here we are, square inside the Piccadilly Arcade, uh, right in front of Benson and Clegg. Uh, of course, you know, one of my favorite bespoke suit makers. What I like about Benson and Clegg, of course, being off of Savile Row, they have a little bit of an updated style that's a little bit more contemporary. Uh, and their uh, lead cutter or head cutter, Oliver Cross, uh, is really doing absolutely exceptional inspired work. Uh, if you don't follow Benson and Clegg uh, on Instagram, you should absolutely follow them. Uh, I love seeing their work, and they've been a facet work uh, during this lockdown, uh, developing some new models. So let's go inside and check in with the team and see what they've been up to. Uh, we're upstairs in the Bespoke Tailoring Lounge uh, with Bespoke Cutter, uh, Oliver Cross. Oliver, hey, it's so great to see you. It's got to be nice to finally finally be back uh, kind of in your element. Oh, Kirby, it's a really nice feeling to be back. It's nice to be open again. It's nice to see a bit of a... Uh you know, just a little bit more bustle, hustle and bustle in London. Um, the streets are a little bit busier today, which is great. And uh, yeah, everybody's moods have, have just sort of heightened, you know, with the with sort of the, the, the plan ahead of June 21st, all restrictions going. It's a uh, sort of light at the end of the tunnel now. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, you know, as I was kind of explaining at the beginning of this segment is, uh, you know, although London uh, reopening, you know, uh, at least the stores reopening doesn't allow us to travel there, but it's actually a very significant first step uh, in what will ultimately be the kind of cascade of events that will ultimately result uh, in London and England uh, and really hopefully the rest of the world really reopening for good and us putting this behind us. So I can't tell you uh, how encouraged I am uh, and really just, um, you know, reassured to see, you know, things beginning to return to normal in London. Thank you. Yeah, here, here. I, uh, I, I agree, and it's, uh, it's a great feeling to, uh, to open our doors again and welcome our customers back. So, yeah. yeah, absolutely. And and although I mean, you know, you guys have been closed at least the shop for a while. You haven't uh, been not working. And I know uh, just from following kind of the uh, you know, Benson Clegg on on Instagram. Uh, that you guys have really been fast at work putting together uh, new collections and things uh, really to prepare us all for spring and summer. Well, it was it was an opportunity. You know, we, we obviously had the time, the, the lack of bespoke fittings and the lack of, uh, you know, face to face with with customers. So we, we, we used the time to, um, you know, not diversify, but just to just to forward think about how strategically how we can move forward with not seeing customers and and you know, coming up with new offerings and, and also, you know, the, the whole 
the whole ske- landscape of tailoring has, has changed during lockdown with the whole, you know, the movement of, of sort of more casual sartorial wear. Um, so we, we've just, you know, ticked the box there and, and explored other avenues in order to move forward as a tailor's. Yeah, well, I think it's been interesting to see how uh, every firm has kind of responded a bit differently uh, to evolving uh, and really, you know, evolving probably uh, for the best. And uh, Benson and Clegg certainly has uh, been a great example of that. Uh, you guys have launched a new online made to order process that allows, you know, people, you know, from anywhere and uh, people, you know, at a certainly lower price point to access, you know, the history and bespoke archive of Benson and Clegg uh, without having to make it to London and go through the full bespoke service. Yeah, absolutely. You know, it's um, it's it's a good starting point for anybody that wants to delve into the world of custom tailoring. Um, you know, we felt that we wanted to offer something that was almost like a, you know, a similar price to ready to wear, but to allow them to customize the suit um, in, in certain, certain ways. We, we didn't give them full, we haven't given full, clar- full um, you know, uh, measurements. They don't have to do that. But all we've done is we've, we've created our blocks. So we, we're going from a 36 to a, a 48 block. Um, and we, we came up with a collection of, of really nice sort of muted colors um, and, and formal slash casual tailoring. And the concept being they, you know, with a, with a jacket, they can choose their sleeve length and their jacket length. And we've got full instructions, measuring guides on our website, showing you, explaining step by step how to do that and how to achieve the, a, a decent jacket length for yourself. Um, because you, you know as well as I, uh, you know, a jacket that is short on somebody or too long, it just looks... It looks out of place, and you know there's there's a sort of feng shui to create with with the with the body, and everything has to harmonise. So getting that jacket length and the the height of the trousers and the trouser length um, correct just aesthetically looks so much better. You know, it looks it looks pleasing to the eye. Um, so we've done that, and we've selected some fantastic British cloths. Um, We've got two. Well, we've got three, uh, three two-piece suits um, where you can buy separately um, the jacket and the trousers. Um, Crisp Air Holland and Sherry uh, travel cloth, which is a fantastic cloth to work with, very durable. Um, it's ten ounce, so it's a, it's a decent weight, um, and it stays clean looking. You know, keeps its sharp creases. We've done it in a in a dark brown and a forest green. And my theory behind that was, you know. A navy and charcoal suit are smart, but I feel with these dark browns and you know these the darker tones, you can still look just as formal in a dark brown suit or a or a forest green suit as you would in a navy suit. And the beauty of them is is you can break them up and wear them as separates. You know that the forest green trousers with a navy DB blazer on point looks fantastic. You know, and you can wear knitwear underneath. You can wear a shirt and rep tie if you wanted. Uh, you know, the, the possibilities are endless. So we just wanted to create a, a, a wardrobe that, you know, a, a customer can buy a few pieces out of, and he's got you know three or four outfits out of, out of it all. So, you know, equally the forest green jacket can be worn as a single-breasted um, jacket with uh, a, 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 we've got a Doug Dale's um, twist grey t- travel twist flannel. Um, and we've done trousers in that. Um, lovely waistband, nice sort of deep waistband with a long extension and a nice little belt loop with strap and buckle side adjusters. Um, turnips, if, if you want, you can, you can select turnips or plain bottoms. And it's all very simple in, uh, you know, you do it online, you place your order, and then within four weeks, we, we get the garment, we go over it, do a quality check, check the measurements, and then we'll send it on to the customers. Um, ourselves so we've created we've got here we've got a what I like to call a rucksack jacket Uh, sounds a bit sounds a bit daft but the the concept behind it is it's a unstructured cotton jacket Um, it's got shirt sleeve technology so it's it's got the 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 sort of inset seam on the sleeve head there Um, it's totally unlined and it's a jacket that you can afford to beat up a bit you know you can roll it up you can put it in your, your gym bag and go to the gym and, you know, you can, it looks awesome with uh, a pair of grey flannels and, you know, that sort of Ivy League style if you wanted to wear an Oxford button down with it with a nice rep tie. Equally, you know, as de- demonstrated here, uh, you can't see the trousers. It's a light grey pair of flannel trousers, um, a white turtleneck, 
Um, it looks fantastic and you can wear it how you wish and the, that's the whole concept behind it is dress it up, dress it down. Um, but we've kept to our staples as well. You know, what we're known for, we've used our Benson and Clegg blazer buttons on them. We've created the, what we like to do, you know, the classic blazer, classic double-breasted blazer with Benson and Clegg City of London blazer buttons on in a, in a nice, um, it's got a nice, decent wide lapel on it. Um, and it's uh, a Smith Woolens cloth, I believe, and in a hop sack weave in a dark navy. So, you know, super traditional blazer, but as demonstrated here, wearing it with knit wearing a little neckerchief, Wear it with a rep tie, dress it up. Wear it with a pair of stonewashed jeans if you want open. It, you know, anybody can wear a blazer. Do you find yourself, uh, you know, kind of being drawn towards double-breasted uh, jackets? I mean, I'm wearing one, you're wearing one. Both those models are double-breasted jackets. Is is that something you're integrating more into your collections now? I think more more so with, less so with suits. I mean, you know, don't get me wrong. This is, this is a, a double-breasted suit here. And I, I love, I'm partial to a double-breasted. Um, with the bla on the blazer side of things, especially with this one, we wanted to we wanted it to look classic yet appeal to a modern audience equally. Um, hence, we, we kept the double breasted with a nice, decent sized lapel with the belly swooping in, patch pockets. You know, so it's that real good crossbreed between the the, the formal style and uh, casual style blazer. Okay, and then you know what else? I mean, you know, as you kind of have you know been focusing on you know, kind of developing new things, you know, while you've been kind of away from the cutting theater. You know, what else has kind of struck your interest? I mean, any other kind of interesting projects or little side things that you're working on that you might be able to share? Absolutely. We, we, there's, um, we are actually working with a, um, a stylist called Joe Ottaway. Um, Joe Ottaway, he is well known for, he was David, he's David Gandhi's stylist and he styles other, other celebrities and models. Um, Joe Ottaway's, uh, he has worked with us on a collaboration that we're doing, um, which allows us to, um, you know, with, with Joe's ethos and his uh, style, it allows us to be a bit more creative outside the realms of Benson and Clegg. And we've actually created some, um, some nice sort of shacket suits. So, you know, the sort of loose uh, over, over shirt jackets, um, so we've done it in, you know, we've, we've got a linen, I can announce we've got a, a, a nice beige linen two piece coming out. We've got a white seersucker, real summer wear, um, a few knitwear pieces we've been working on. So we, that's a project that we're going to launch very soon, which we're very excited about. Um, and equally, we've, we started offering knitwear ourselves. Um, you know, we've, we've, it's in a nice uh, Italian workshop we've, we've sourced and they make the most beautiful knitwear. Um, and we've got so many different options available. So we've sort of branched out in that aspect as well. Yeah, that's great. Yeah, it was just, we were just over at Bud Shirt Makers and uh, Bud Shirt Maker, and they were talking about, you know, their new Riviera uh, shirt that they've just launched. And so, you know, you've spoken about some great pieces that, you know, really seem perfect for, uh, you know, kind of spring, summer as we uh, are able to resume traveling. Uh, there's no reason not to do it looking smart, looking tailored uh, and dressing up, uh, even if you are, you know, in the Riviera or, you know, in the Caribbean uh, or in, you know, Cabo San Lucas, like I was a few weeks ago, uh, you know, there's always an opportunity to look smart and to dress up, right? Absolutely. Yeah. And I, you know, I really, everybody has their own individual style. And, you know, the sartorial world is is all about you portraying your, you know, dressing your personality and, and dressing what makes you comfortable. Um, and this is what we try and endorse. You know, we, we don't pigeonhole one type of customer. You know, we want to sort of um, educate the, the sort of, uh, you know, menswear uh, enthusiasts in, into sort of different ways you can dress to be yourself. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, I was just, uh, I mean, I think we all go through different phases of kind of developing our wardrobe. And for many of us, the first place we start with the formal wear. I mean, it's probably what we might have the most opportunity to wear. Uh, it's uh, certainly in some ways can be the most important. Uh, but, you know, once we do kind of our four season formal wear, it's going on to the seasonal kind of collections, you know, spring, summer, fall, winter, and then pass that into the true kind of tailored casual wear. You know, the beautiful slack jacket that you were talking about, uh, you know, ruck set jackets. I mean, things that, you know, that really allow us to, you know, be smarter than just wearing a pair of shorts that we bought at the Old Navy or something. Yeah, 100%. And this is what we, you know, we, we, 
we uh, we endorse we we believe in you know if you're into menswear and you want to dress well, um, buying pieces that you believe in and pieces that you will wear and you know uh, that that become old friends and and this is exactly what what a man's wardrobe should be. Well, I couldn't be any more thrilled to see you guys back. Uh, it's got to feel good to be back, kind of upstairs uh, in the little cutting uh, bespoke tailoring lounge, and uh, you know send my best to the team. Of course, anyone that's watching this that's in London. Of course, drop in, say hello. I'm sure, um, you know, Oliver and the entire team would uh, certainly be thrilled to see you and welcome uh, you back kind of into their store. Uh, but if you aren't able to make it to London, of course, <clears throat> you know, check out Vincent and Clegg online uh, where you can still access this firm's beautiful uh, kind of archive of, 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 of work, you know, through their made to order program. Uh, and then their accessories like the buttons and the ties and everything else that you guys offer online. So. Uh, Oliver, uh, great to see you. Uh, congratulations at being back. And I uh, can't tell you uh, just uh, how it's a breath of uh, fresh air and energy to see kind of London coming back to life. Uh, and I couldn't be any more happy about that. Kirby, thank you. Keep doing what you're doing. You, you, what, you do wonders for, uh, for menswear and the, you know, our industry. And uh, we, we really appreciate it. Thank you. So here we are on German Street in Edward Green, of course, one of the most important uh, shoe shops uh, in all of uh, German Street. And we're here with shop manager, Anthony. Anthony, it's so great to see you. It's great to see you back in the shop. Now, of course, Edward Green, the online shop's been open this entire time, uh, but it is nice to see uh, the boutique and kind of the flagship there in German Street able to welcome customers back in. Yeah, hi, hi Kirby. Yeah, it's, it's, it's great. You know, it feels really, really nice. Um, I think we were super eager to get those doors open and say hello to some of our domestic clients again. You know, it's a really good feeling and we hope, we hope that we can welcome back, you know, more and more, um, especially when our, when our international customers can travel. I mean, as, as I've been saying, I mean, this is a, a, a small first step, but a really important first step for us. Yeah. Kind of returning to normalcy. And uh, I mean, it's just hard to believe that for months, I mean, uh, all of those uh, doors on German Street, Piccadilly Arcade, Savile Row, uh, have really been closed to the public and unable to really uh, welcome uh, their customers and patrons into the shops. So uh, small step forward, but it's gotta be a big relief to feel like we're finally uh, on the right track forward. Uh, absolutely, and I, and I feel like, you know, especially on German Street, Savile Row, the product that we have is super personal, you know, and we, you really have, we really like to engage with the customer, um, you know, very, very personal relationship that we have. Um, so it's always great to see them back on site again. Um, it's not quite the same having to order it online or, you know, to and fro with, with images from your phone or from the website. So, um, yeah, I think a lot of our customers will be happy to come, come back and see us in the branch. Absolutely. Now, I mean, I think one of the things that's been interesting to me is that, you know, although, you know, most of the shops have been closed, uh, it in no way has meant that you guys haven't been fast at work. And I know that Edward Green, of course, like so many, uh, have been, you know, working away at new products and new uh, new collections. Uh, is there anything new that is now available in the shop that, uh, that you can share with us? Yeah, absolutely. Like you say, despite the shop being closed, we have been uh, beavering away in the background. Um, I've got some of them here just behind me, so I'm going to bring them, bring them forward up. There's one in particular um, that we've really developed more recently with spring, summer in mind. Um, we have such great success and a lot of demand for our slipper, cemented sole, lightweight loafers. You know, what one would use for, for travel. So we've really developed that and we've actually made a slightly more formal variation of that called the padstone. Now this is a really interesting design because although it's cemented sole, you know, very thin, uh, very lightweight, also unlined. You have this Levant calf, so it's, it's a really, really soft, natural calf, and it almost has this kind of very subtle pin grain effect running through it. Um, so again, it will be an oil-based oil -based leather, so again, it's really supple, really comfortable to wear. So we're doing this in a black, and then also um, the brown, and then the black as well, just here, sorry. So we're doing it in the black, and the brown. I love how those oiled leathers you know, really develop such unique patinas the more that you wear them. Yeah, super, super nice. They almost look better once they've been, you know, worn a few times, beaten up a little bit. <laughs> they do tend to have that kind of patina. Um, so kind of focusing on the kind of slip-on loafer range, um, we've also introduced a, um, a kind of like a formal slipper, um, something which we call the Penzance. I'll just grab that for you now. Um, this is the Penzance 
in one of the more, more seasonal colour. Kind of army green suede, baby calf suede, so still has that kind of soft and supple touch. Um, very, very minimalist style, again on the cemented sole, so it's very, very slim. And then you just really have these tassels on the front here, just giving it a little bit more character there. So really easy to wear, but you can dress it up a little bit, um, especially in the black also. You can imagine that kind of of an evening, going out for dinner, going, you know, going to the bar. Um, that would really be, be worn quite, quite nicely in the evenings. You know, those cemented soles, uh, they're just so comfortable to be worn you know, with a yeah. pair of uh, smart shorts, you know, no socks. Absolutely. No socks. I mean, it really makes me uh, look forward to summer. Yeah, and we all struggle with um, our weight allowances when traveling, so <laughs> these kind of shoes are ideal because you can just flat pack them and they weigh next to nothing. So we, we definitely recommend those. Uh, we will be continuing with the other options, of course. You know, you'll be familiar with the Portland and the Polpero that, of course, doesn't have the tassels. Um, just a few more interesting colors. This particular one is aqua baby calf suede, you know, a little bit bolder, a little bit stronger in colour. The next model which we've introduced um, is one called the Draycott. Um, it's very much based on a, a classic shoe. Uh, it's a plain finish apron loafer, comes in two available suedes, a really rich, deep mink suede, which is seen you know, throughout the collection, and then also a slightly stronger snuff suede. So a little bit more, a little bit more casual, works beautifully with browns, creams, whites, what have you. Um, I just uh, got them here behind, I'll just quickly show this one. This one's in snuff suede. You'll be able to see there, kind of very plain finish, raised stitched apron there. Lovely toe shape. And then of course we have um, a rubber sole on the bottom as well. So it's a little bit, little bit durable as well. Another great casual piece, is that a hand stitched apron or is it a mach machine stitch? Uh, no, it's not, it's not hand stitched. It's a ra raised machine stitch apron, that one. Um, we, we do have a huge amount of hand stitch options in store at the moment because we have the Dover but then we also done it on a, a variety of boots as well. Um, look forward to the next autumn winter 21 where we'll have a lot more a lot more to show you absolutely. Yeah. So what we found last season is that you know people were very much into um, chucker boots but for the spring summer so desert boots but for the spring summer so unlined chucker boots pretty much. So we've always done a model called the Shanklin, which is a real classic kind of, you know, clean cut chucker boot, uh, very, very successful, comes in six different suedes. Um, but we often received inquiries um, for something a little bit sharper, I guess a little bit more formalised, but not so, not so formal that it's quite severe. So we've introduced this particular boot here, which is a really smart two eyelet, unlined extended facings here. Um, one we call the shale. Uh, we've changed last as well, so it was on the traditional 202 last, to kind of our house last, if you will, where it is quite rounded. Um, but this 82 last just gives it a little bit more refinement, I think, and a nice almond toe shape there. That's really what we were looking for in something like this. And it looks like it's a relatively low cut. I mean, it's not, um, you know, on the chuck boots, you can kind of vary the height of the actual uh, ankle. Uh, and that is, you know, kind of a little bit lower than, you know, maybe some other styles. This one's a bit of a bit of a hybrid, you know, a shoe, a shoe boot. That's great. So, I mean, the chucker boots, I mean, so it looks like, you know, with things reopening, you know, here we are in April. You know, hopefully we'll be traveling, you know, to the Riviera or traveling to kind of our favorite summer holiday spots here soon. Uh, it seems like, you know, Edward Green's really kind of taking a focus on, um, you know, on these kind of spring summer uh, styles that, you know, uh, are certainly juxtaposed against the traditional kind of classic uh, British formal dress shoe. Uh, absolutely. You know, we're, we're really trying to get out there that, you know, Edward Green, we're not just your Oxfords, your Derbys you know, your very formal and classic round toe shoes. You know, we're extremely flexible. We're very, very versatile into what we can make, what kind of colors we're willing to experiment as well. And, you know, we were frequently receiving inquiries out, you know, I need something like this, like that, lightweight, easily packable, um, maybe a little bit more interesting. So we've really listened to our customer feedback and we've, we've developed that particular market massively over the last two years. Um, I think now we offer up to 10 different loafer models that you can wear. Uh, you can take a ho on a holiday with you um, or even just traveling with work you know something that's lightweight for traveling but has that 
kind of formality that you can wear it with a suit to meetings. We're, we're really trying to cover all bases. Well, it's been really kind of interesting over the last several years to see Edward Green develop its collection. And as you, uh, Anthony, uh, so correctly pointed out, I mean, you know, people often think of Edward Green as really the standard bearer on, you know, classic English uh, Goodyear welted dress shoes. I mean, Edward Green making some of the finest Goodyear welted dress shoes in the world. Uh, but, you know, oftentimes it's easy to forget that you know, you've got this massive collection of casual stuff that's constantly kind of renewing itself seasonally uh, that, you know, if you're someone that really appreciates fine dress shoes, the quality craftsmanship and tradition that you get with a company like Edward Green, there's really some great options out there for the weekend, for travel, uh, and for those that maybe just don't find themselves wearing black cap toes. You know, it's happening more and more. You know, it's frequently been said that tailoring is a you know, as a trade is becoming more casual, jackets becoming unlined, unstructured, you know, wider lapels, notch lapels. So, you know, it's, it's really catering for that kind of style, that trend, that demand. And really what we want to achieve is, is the tradition and the quality that you have in Oxford and then really transfer it into something, you know, a bit more casual, a bit more, bit more versatile, one would say. So the most important thing for us is carrying along that quality. And it's something that we've managed to achieve throughout all our models, fortunately. Yeah, absolutely. And, and all these shoes continue to be made in Northampton at your factory. Absolutely. Everything is um, made in-house. You know, um, production is as it always has been. You know, there's no modernization of techniques. Everything is still true to our, true to our heritage. And of course, we still stand by um, quality without compromise. So. Absolutely. Everything that uh, we've come to expect from a company like Edward Green. Well, that's really exciting. I'm so thrilled uh, to hear that the, uh, the doors of your German Street shop are open again to customers. I'm sure uh, that's really exciting. But of course, for the rest of us uh, that can't yet travel to London, of course, there's always edwardgreen.com. Uh, and you guys ship to the United States. You guys really ship all over the world, don't you? Abs absolutely. Yeah. You know, places like uh, United States as well. We also cover duties and taxes, for example. So it makes um, the, the process of ordering online very streamlined, very quick, very simple for the customer. Uh, we have complimentary returns, especially from the US. Um, so we really try and make it as user friendly as possible in a, you know, in a climate where you can't come and visit us. Of course, we'd love to see you all, but uh, <laughs> we can't at the moment. Well, hopefully soon uh, we'll be uh, kind of uh, fast behind the British, which now are uh, really able to enjoy London uh, totally themselves at the moment, but uh, hopefully yeah. make way here soon uh, for the rest of us as we're able to travel. Uh, any, cust any questions that customers have just on sizing or styles? I mean, can they ring up the shop? Can they email? Can they chat? What's the best way to really get in touch with the Edward Green uh, staff? Yeah, ab absolutely. You know, there's quite often um, a bit of confusion between American and, and UK sizing. So we always recommend contact, contacting us beforehand. Um, most frequently we'll receive emails. You know, we have a uh, very highly monitored email system at the moment. But then, you know, if someone would prefer to pick up the phone and call us, we're more than happy to take calls and take the time to walk through the different lasts, the different sizes, the different widths, and really find the best fit possible. We are going to work, um, especially with our website, to hopefully create something that is a bit more uh, a bit easier for the customer to navigate and find their uh, find their exact size. So that's something for us to look forward to. Um, but we love dealing yeah. on a we do, we love dealing on a personal basis. You know, all of our relationships with our customers are very personal. Yeah, I mean that is uh, I think one of the hallmarks of, uh, of British retail, especially from the heritage uh, retailers like Edward Green and uh, those uh, that you um, certainly uh, are in good company on German Street is that high degree of personalized service, but combined with expertise. I mean, you know, you're uh, working uh, with shop managers and shopkeepers uh, that are, are truly experts at what they do and, and highly professional. Uh, um, and so, you know, those two, you know, that combined with the, the heritage and the quality and the craftsmanship, uh, you know, is really, I think, what makes London retail so unique. And it's for that reason, we're, we're happy to see that you guys are back open. Uh, to anyone watching this video, of course, you know, uh, our support is essential uh, to keeping these historic institutions uh, open. So, uh, you know, now might be the time to splurge in a few new pairs of shoes for the summer. Uh, I certainly know it's uh, something I've been doing. Yeah. Well, we look forward to welcoming you to London, Kirby, and showing you some of the new lasts and the models that we have available.
Yeah, absolutely. Anthony, hey, thank you so much. I'm so uh, happy to see everyone uh, open and hope to see you all soon. Yeah, thanks, Kirby. Thanks for your time. See you soon. So here we are, uh, you know, walking down German Street. I mean, it's, I guess, the next best thing from being there in person. Uh, here we are at the top of the Piccadilly Arcade uh, right there. You see New and uh, Ling Lingwood right there uh, with their beautiful kind of dressing gowns. Inside, we've got, of course, Benson and Clegg, Deacon and Francis, uh, Bud Shirt Makers, and so much more. Uh, and it's nice to see that, uh, you know, there are, in fact, kind of people out walking around and uh, hopefully shopping a little bit uh, right here. So let's kind of head down German Street and take a look at, at what else we have. Uh, so we just visited Edward Green, of course. Uh, we've got uh, Turnbull and Asser uh, back there also. Uh, if we keep on walking, um, yeah, let's see. So we've got some taxis out. We've got, of course, the uh, the lunch boxes. One of my favorite lunch spots uh, right there on the corner. Uh, another good place. Uh, and then as we kind of walk up, uh, let's see. We can see the restaurants open with their outdoor dining. It's uh, what time is it in London right now? It's right around lunchtime. I think 1:30. Yep, 45 German Street right there. Uh, they've got a nice bar. I remember grabbing some drinks with uh, Andy Murphy uh, there after Foster and Son's uh, uh, shop closed for the day. Uh, now, if you see the green awning right there, uh, that is Foster and Sons. You know, Foster and Sons. Uh, of course, has had a little bit of a tough time, but they are still open, as you can see right there. Uh, and um, that's certainly great news, I think, for much of these uh, traditional kind of heritage brands. I mean, so much of 2020 and certainly the beginning of 2021 was about just staying open. Uh, if they could just survive and keep their doors open, keep the lights on uh, through this pandemic, uh, then, of course, kind of brighter times uh, are ahead. And, uh, you know, if you've been following Foster & Sons on Instagram, you know that they've had some great sales. Uh, we actually added, or I added, a few of their shoes to my collection uh, over the pandemic. And uh, we actually uh, had an unboxing video uh, kind of uh, uh, featuring those. But it's nice to see uh, their doors open. Uh, we weren't able to actually coordinate uh, an opportunity to go in and visit um, a little bit of a skeletal staff. Uh, but nonetheless, nice to see them open. So let's continue to kind of head down German Street. And then here we are, uh, number, uh, number 89, uh, German Street, Floris. Uh, and this is, I think, you know, probably one of the most historic uh, and oldest shops on German Street. Uh, they, of course, have several royal warrants uh, for their fragrances uh, with the royal family. And, um, you know, we carry an extensive selection of Floris fragrances on KirbyAllison.com. And I enjoy uh, personally uh, a pretty large and active rotation uh, of their fragrances uh, just, uh, just for my own personal enjoyment. Now, what I love about Floris, of course, is it's uh, uh, as, uh, as bona fide of a British heritage brand as it gets, uh, and they're doing an absolutely exceptional job. Uh, so we're going to go inside. We're going to see uh, Edward, uh, the managing director of Floris. He's got a few things to share with us. And uh, let's see what they've been up to uh, during these last few months. Uh, so here we are. Uh, I mean, another one of my absolute favorite shops. It's really kind of making me a little bit homesick, you know, not being able to be there in person. But Floris uh, on German Street. I mean, not only is it the oldest shop on all of German Street, having been founded in 1730, uh, but we've got Edward Bodenham, who's the ninth generation managing family member here with us today uh, to talk a little bit about what you guys have been working on and what we have to look forward to. Hey, Edward, it's so great to see you back in the shop. Uh, I can't imagine how great it must feel. It feels amazing, it really does. Yeah, it's great to see you too. And uh, you know, thank you for, for asking us to, to be part of your, your, uh, your post today. Um, but no, it's, it's really exciting. And there's, there's a great atmosphere in London at the moment. And um, just on the way in, I saw quite a few of our neighbors and we, we were sort of chatting and it's just great to see everybody out again. And everyone's in such good spirits, which is lovely. I, it's got to be a little bit surreal. I mean, this is, yeah. I think, in recent memory, the first time, you know, really any of these shops uh, in London have ever been closed for such a prolonged period of time. Hopefully it's the last that it ever happens. Uh, but to be, you know, reopening, kind of having a re-grand opening, if you will, after several months of not being able to see customers, uh, you know, probably has to be, you know, I, I can't even imagine how that feels. It is. It's very strange. Yeah, in, in nearly 300 years, the, the shop... I think was was shot for for one day. I think there, there was a bomb in St James's Churchyard, and it blew the the windows through. Uh, and I think 
a, a day to sort of to, to get those fixed and then I think we were open again so it's it's like nothing else we've ever had in uh, in all of our history so very strange yeah very strange but um, you know I mean Flores again making some of the world's greatest and most uh, uh, famous fragrances. I mean, for me, in the absence of being able to travel, the absence of really, you know, being able to kind of proceed with life as normal, you know, I have found that, you know, still, you know, putting on my fragrance in the morning, just being kind of one of those ritualistic practices that kind of helped ground me. I mean, even though I wasn't traveling or getting on airplanes, you know, still putting on my favorite uh, fragrance. I think today, in, in honor of today's you know, little live stream, I'm, I'm wearing the new German Street uh, Eau de Parfum. Oh, so am I, actually. <laughs> Uh, you know, it's really been something that I think's kind of helped get me through this, a little bit of a, a, a kind of a sanity water, if you will. It has with me too, actually, definitely. I think the sense of sense of smell is so, um, it's so nostalgic and so comforting as well, you know, to have something that, that brings that familiarity, that, that it, it, it does bring so much comfort as well. And so when, when things are very strange and, you know, we're in these difficult times, when you have your your fragrance that you, your sort of reassuring fragrance that you put on and you always have done. There's something very reassuring really and comforting about that. It is reassuring though. I mean, it's like you hit that and it's, I mean, I feel like I, uh, hopefully I'm not getting too far off into the woods here, but you know, there is something, you know, nostalgic about it and something reassuring. And in the morning, whenever I, I apply my fragrance, uh, you know, there's just something that kind of brings me together and makes me feel you know, more prepared for the day. I mean, it may seem so inconsequential and so in insignificant as, as, as a fragrance, uh, but really, uh, I don't think you can under, uh, overstate, you know, the importance uh, of, a, of a nice fragrance and just how, you know, it's as important to what you're, you know, kind of wearing or, uh, as your tie or your suit. Absolutely, it's part of, you know, part of you getting dressed in the morning and, you know, having like the same as having a shave as well, you know, that, I find that quite therapeutic as well, one of those things that just sort of sets me up for the day. Absolutely. Yeah. So I know that, uh, I mean, <clears throat> the doors to the shop have been closed. I mean, of course, the online shop has probably been uh, running at full tilt. Uh, you know, you guys have still been able to serve your customers. Of course, we on KirbyAllison.com have an extensive collection of florist fragrances. Uh, but I understand yes. that you guys have certainly been fast at work on new projects. So uh, is there anything new and interesting that you might be able to share uh, that we can see in the, uh, the German Street flagship? Yes, of course. Well, um, we have been working on a fragrance uh, called Golden Amber, um, which is um, a marine oriental fragrance. And it's, it's actually a fragrance that's, that's hand poured. So we, we actually hand poured them here um, just behind uh, the shop here. We have our perfumery. And so we, that's where we work on all of our, our new fragrances. And, um, and this fragrance, we, we just poured 200 bottles. And um, today was the, it seemed fit, uh, to, to be the, the day to launch it. So uh, as we're all reopening, we've, uh, we've, we've got our golden amber window there and we, we have it as pride of place here as soon as you come in the shop. And uh, so it's nice to be able to, to open the shop with the launch as well. So well, that's yeah, exciting. Really exciting. So, I mean, hand poured, I mean, again, kind of, you know, really as an ode, if you will, to uh, Flor Floris's uh, heritage. I mean, that, you know, you guys have been handcrafting fragrances um, you know, since fragrances have been around practically. Well, since, uh, since the early days. So it's something that, and that's, we've still got all of our um, antique glassware that we use when we're creating a fragrance as well, because we work in uh, fluid ounces and fluid drams um, on, when we're creating a fragrance as well as when we're, when we're pouring it as well. So that's one of those sort of traditions that, that we've kept uh, through, throughout the years. So we're always very um, worried about smashing one of the glasses because we're not sure where we'd be able to replace them. But so far, so good. So that's good. So on this golden amber, I mean, you guys are hand pouring the 200, um, you know, the 200 bottles there. Uh, is that something that is hand poured whenever a customer comes in uh, and uh, requests the purchase one or are all 200 already poured? Uh, and then are they individually numbered? They, they've actually already been poured. Um, uh, we yeah, poured them in, in the perfumery, but we do have some fragrances which are part of our ledgers collection where they have uh, specific sort of stories to them. So a fragrance that Marilyn Monroe, when she visited London, she, she bought uh, six bottles of rose geranium. So we have, um, we, we discontinued the, the fragrance in, in the main line, but we, we have it, we can hand pour it for customers that want to come in. And we have a, a fragrance that Laurence Olivier used to wear and um, uh, Oscar Wilde as well, he used to wear our Malmaison fragrance. So we've got a few different fragrances where we do actually hand pour them for, 
uh, there on the day. But these have all been hand, hand poured, all of the 200 golden amber's. Yeah. And that is one of the things that I think I love most about London retail. I mean, not only do you have, you know, a quality craftsmanship and uh, tradition kind of manifested at the highest level, uh, but just the experience of London retail is really so unique in the world. I mean, I can't think of another shopping district in the world, maybe save certain areas of Paris, uh, that offer the same level of experience that you get, at least for the well-dressed gentleman, uh, that you, than uh, what you find in London. I mean, just look at German Street. You know, you can you know start at Davidoff of London. You know, at the head right there at St. James's. You know, uh, you know, be advised on uh, some cigars. You know, walk down, lunch at Wilton's, uh, and then you know stroll down to Florist. You know, where you can have a, a fragrance hand poured uh, that was really poured in the same tradition as uh, it was for someone like Marilyn Monroe. Absolutely. Now, German Street is, it's, uh, and St. James's, this area is, uh, it is a wonderful area. We really are so fortunate to, to be here and, you know, to, to be able to come here every day is such a, such a delight. It really is. Yeah. Well, I mean, it is, it's certainly an experience that is unique in the world and it's great to see you know, the doors opening back up uh, and for people, uh, at least those uh, uh, Britons, you know, being able to return to their favorite stores. And, um, you know, I guess in, in many ways, you know, to us here in America, it seems like it's not quite enough yet because we can't be the ones uh, there really kind of enjoying this. Uh, but it's still not to, um, you know, not to understate, I think, the significance of this step, which is after several months of uh, being totally shuttered uh, to customers, um, you know, Britain is reopened for business. People are able to walk uh, into their favorite stores uh, and continue yeah. to really participate uh, in that very rich tradition of British retail. Definitely. And, and visitors to the shop, if, if we... Um if the perfumery is, uh, if we don't have a consultation on at the, at the time, then we're very happy to show customers around and show some of our archives where we we have all sorts of the, the ledgers, you know, dating back to the, well, the 30s and 40s with some well-known customers. And uh, we have a letter from Florence Nightingale and things like that. So it's a it's a pleasure to sort of show customers around when they come and come and visit as well. So um, we'll, we'll make up for lost time when, when people come come and see us anyway. Yeah. Well, uh, talk to me a little bit more about the golden amber. I mean, I'm going to have to, uh, uh, I'm going to have to take a bottle of that. So we'll have to coordinate that after this call. Add it to my uh, collection oh, yeah, of, course. <laughs> of, of, of historic kind of, of Florence, uh, Florence fragrances. Uh, but what are the notes and kind of what is the, what was the inspiration for? This? It has notes of uh, fig, um, bergamot as well, uh, cassis. And it's got quite a prominent amber note as well, which is um, obviously in the, the title of the, the fragrance. So it's got this kind of warm, glowing uh, side to it as well. Um, then there's neroli in as well, so it has a sort of slightly orangey floral note as well. So it's, it's actually quite a, um, quite a summery uh, fragrance. It's, it's sort of medium uh, weight, I suppose, but it has um, a real longevity to it, which is sort of brought on by the by the amber and the sandalwood as well, and then some, some musk notes as well. So it's, it's, um, yeah, it's been really well received so far, actually. Yeah, well, that's exciting. Well, so if uh, anyone that's uh, watching this and not able to actually make it to London in person, uh, can they ring up the shop and, and buy a bottle, or is this something they can buy online? Uh, they can buy online or, or ring up. That's, that, that's um, perfectly fine as well. Or to come to the shop, yeah, whichever. So um, we, we, we do have it on the website as well. Well, great. Well, Edward, I don't want to take any more of your time. It looks like you've got customers coming in. Uh, but, uh, you know, congratulations on reopening. It's so great to see you guys uh, in the shop. Look forward to seeing you uh, in the shop soon, hopefully. Uh, so here we are. Finally, we've made it to Savile Row, of course. I mean, it's hard to pick a favorite street in London between German Street, Piccadilly Arcade, St. James's, Savile Row. There's just so, so many great places to see. Uh, but um, here we are, Savile Row at uh, Gaziano and Girling, of course. Uh, one of our great friends, Tony Gaziano. Uh, and the first uh, shoemaker to be established on Savile Row. Uh, Tony, it's so great to see you. It's great to see you back in the shop. And it's, of course, great to see you back and open for business. Hi, Kirby. It's great to see you. And uh, thanks for inviting us again to be part of this. Uh, we're over the moon that the shop's open again. And uh, we can't wait for the customers to start rolling in. <laughs> Um, but uh, it's looking quite busy out there today, the sun's shining, so we're feeling quite optimistic. 
yeah. I mean, you know, I mean, in a, in a true sign of the times, you know, kind of it's almost a poetic, uh, you know, weather uh, uh, movement is you actually had snow this morning in April in London. Yeah, I mean, we had a couple of weeks ago, we had a heat wave, and then it snowed. And then it, it got warmer again, and then it's, it snowed again this morning. It's, uh, it, it's pretty typical of this time of year, to be honest with you. But uh, hopefully the warm weather's on the way. Um, and you can, you can start to feel the, uh, the vibe of uh, people's, uh, you know, of people kind of uh, feeling more positive and more optimistic about things as, as the restaurants start to open and the pubs start to open. Well, being England, definitely the pubs. Uh, people, are, you know, have been looking forward to that for a while. Um, so, you know, it's uh, it's it's a very, we're on a very positive note at the moment, and hopefully it carries on that way. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, you know, this is one of the things that we've been talking a lot, kind of during this update, is that you know, London reopening is, um, you know, not to be understated in its importance. I mean, it's a small step, uh, but it is a very kind of uh, firm and deliberate step in the right direction. Uh, and, you know, we've got stores reopening for the first time in months. We've got uh, restaurants and pubs with outdoor dining uh, reopening. Uh, and, of course, it's all part of the British government's, um, you know, multi-step plan uh, to completely reopen the country. And, you know, relative to other European countries, I mean, you know, Britain's really the only one right now that's loosening restrictions and not tightening them. Uh, so that's all a very positive sign in the right direction. Yeah. 100%. And I think our government have done uh, an amazing job of distribu distributing the vaccine. Um, and, uh, you know, everybody's starting to understand, you know, why they needed to wait for a while. Uh, now things are loosening up. Um, you, can, you can feel that uh, people are becoming less agitated and uh, a little bit more optimistic about kind of uh, going out to the shops and enjoying a more normal social life again. So, um, you know, hopefully, you know, it carries on that way. Yeah, absolutely. Now, I mean, despite the shop being closed, I mean, the factory's been open, you know, really, you know, pretty much this entire time, except for a few brief closures. And uh, you guys have been fast at work. I mean, it hasn't been a lost year for you. I think that, uh, you know, from what you've shared, uh, you guys have been fast at work and that you finally have some uh, I guess at the end of all this, some really exciting kind of new products and new announcements. Yeah, no, we've, uh, we, in fact, we've been very busy throughout. You know, um, um, you know, it's we've we've spent a lot of time working on developing of new products. Um, the Asia part, Asian part of our market has been very um, busy as well. So, you know, we've had a few, uh, quite a few shoes going through the factory and, um, you know, we've also had some extra time to kind of spend on uh, developing new projects. Any new models that you can share with us? Well, the first, actually I have a few developments, um, some of them which I can't share with you today, but, you know, there's two or three uh, which, uh, which I can. Teasing me. Um, <laughs> yeah, well, you know, we've got to keep, you know, the carrot and donkey trick, if you know what I mean. <laughs> Not mean. <laughs> um, so yeah, we have a we have a new style that which uh, a few of our customers uh, have been asking for um, uh, a, a lazy man, like a full broke lazy man with imitation lacing, and I've been holding back on it for a while because a few people do it out there, but I wanted to do it in a slightly different way, as we always do. So as you can see, this model here. Uh, this is called uh, the Gilbert, and uh, it's, uh, it's basically really two sections, the front and the back section, imitation, uh, wingtip. But the main feature of this which makes it different, you can actually see that uh, the lacing and the opening, and we put a tongue in there, uh, it actually looks like uh, an actual full broke shoe. It takes it that one step farther of what everybody else has done so far um, and has made a real feature out of this area. So it's really quite a unique. I haven't seen anybody else do it uh, so far. Yeah. And that with the profile of the, uh, on the deco last, um, it really, really makes for um, a beautiful, beautiful shoe. Yeah, so I mean so, really, you know, from a distance, I mean, it looks like a, a proper laced Oxford. Yes, it does. Yeah, I mean, obviously, you've got the uh, the, the three gusset on the back on the side, um, but uh, it's quite, you quite know, concealed. Well, I mean, it's got the leather, uh, you know, the leather little coverings to the gussets also. Yeah, 
That's right, yeah. So, um, yeah, no, it's quite discreet. And like you say, when the hem of your trouser sits over this part, no one's going to be able to tell the difference that, um, uh, that it's, it's, it's not an actual lace-up. Uh, and I don't know, for those who have never tried a side gusset shoes before, it's probably one of the most comfortable uh, types of Goodyear welted shoe that you can buy. Without question, especially, Sorry. you know, for travel. Uh, and if you're someone that's, you know, kind of on, on your feet for long periods of times and your feet swell, you know, the shoe, you know, kind of expands with your foot and it's so comfortable. I mean, it's, you don't have any of the, um, you know, discomfort that you may get uh, out of a lace up uh, towards the end of the day. That's right, yeah, because it changes and adapts with your feet uh, through wear and through, uh, you know, what, whatever, whether your feet are swollen up or down or whatever. So, you know, obviously this, uh, this, this model has been made on the Deco Square, so it's got a beautiful fluted uh, waist there. We put a little seamless back on the back, so it makes it very, very clean. And, uh, you know, it really does look like a, a, like a bespoke model. Yeah, well, so, like so many of your ready-to-wear ones, uh, uh, ready-to-wear shoes. I mean, it's a, you know, it's a pretty blurred line there, you know, between you know factory-made ready-to-wear stuff and then full bespoke. And of course, I mean, one of the hallmarks um, of Gaziano and Girling is a, an exceptionally robust made-to-order program. So this new Gilbert yes. model, I mean, I suppose that can be ordered through the made-to-order program on any last with you know any finish. Yep, it can be ordered in any of our leathers, uh, any of our lasts. Uh, it can be, um, yeah, it can be patina leathers, whichever, whichever you want. It's probably, we're looking at releasing it in around about a week or two. So it's not available on the website at the moment. Uh, we've literally, literally just, it's just come off the end of production. So uh, it's, it's, it's brand new. So, um, you know, you might have to wait for a couple of weeks to buy it online, but uh, it's an amazing shoe, amazing shoe. Yeah, well, great. Well, what else? I mean, I know that, um you know, you probably have even more good stuff, so let's keep it going. Yeah, I mean, we've got a couple of things here. We, we did, um, so basically, um, you know, we've become aware that there is a demand for handmade, completely handmade shoes, uh, but on standard lasts, because uh, not everybody's got the patience to wait for you know, 10 to 12 months and go through the fittings of bespoke. As great as bespoke is, you know, um, it, it takes a long time to, to, to make. Uh, additionally, obviously, the pricing of bespoke is, uh, is, is very much top dollar. So what we've done is, is we've created an extension to our existing made-to-order service where uh, the customer can choose uh, the style um, and the leather and the shape uh, and then our bespoke team completely make it um, by hand. So as you can see there, I mean, that, that is our um, standard uh, St. James II model. Um, but this has been made on an 8E last, um, but, it, uh, but it has been completely handmade by bespoke. So it hasn't gone around the factory at all. Um, and you know, when you, when you actually see this shoe in person, you'll find that it actually has a really quite different aesthetic to our manufactured shoes. The, the angles are sharper, uh, the waist is more curved, uh, the execution of the handmade side of, uh, of, of the product really gives it a very, very crisp, clean, uh, ornamental look. Um, and they're, they, you know, they're beautiful. So, um, so the choice, again, you know, you've probably got 130 styles to choose from. Uh, this is another one. This is our Grant. Uh, again, made on the DG70, but completely made by hand. Um, and, um, uh, and it has a slightly different aesthetic to the, the manufactured side, again, because of the, 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 the execution of the craftsmen that we're using to create these. That's, that's interesting. So... Uh, it is. It would be really fascinating to see those side by side uh, to kind of compare and contrast. You know the actual effect uh, that a fully bespoke make uh, has compared to the exact same model. You know, run uh, through the factory. So uh, maybe we'll twist your arm to yeah. send us some samples one day and allow us to do that comparison. Uh, but these are completely yeah. handmade. So hand welted. You know, hand sewn uh, outsoles. Yeah. I mean everything. 
yeah, hand welted, hand sole stitch, hand edge finished. Um, all the buttons are done uh, by hand as well. Um, so uh, the only there, uh, the craftsmanship in this shoe is actually no different at all to uh, one of our bespoke shoes. The only difference is is that we haven't gone through the process of making and personalising you a last. However, we're still prepared on these orders to um, add fittings for small toes, instep, um, you know, in other areas of the shoe to help it fit the customer better than, than, than a normal stock last. But for a lot of customers, I mean, the stock lasts are comfortable. And so if you want, you know, to access that craftsmanship, you know, without, as you described, you know, the weight of bespoke, um, you know, you can still have that degree of uh, quality and craftsmanship uh, without the weight and without, you know, the added expense, which is, you know, several thousand additional pounds. Yeah, no, exactly. For those people that really want to drive to that extreme perfection, when a shoe almost becomes an ornament, it, it is the perfect um, service, um, which is why we call it Optimum. Um, but uh, it's, it's not released yet. Again, it's probably going to be two, three weeks before we kind of uh, release the product. Um, but, you know, we're quite um, confident that, uh, that it will be a, a good success uh, amongst the guys. You know, there's a lot of guys out there that live in Hong Kong and whatever that probably will just contact us and say, hey, I'm a 9E, um, I want you to make up um, a, a, a St. Andrews uh, with a square toe, blah, 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 and then we'll, com we'll completely hand make it for them and send it out, and they already know that it's gonna fit them. What's the lead time of that, um, that service? So the lead time um, of it really is probably gonna be probably about the same time as a, a normal MTO, so you're looking at uh, around about three to four months. Yeah, but that's actually, I mean, you know, taking into consideration that it's a bespoke finish, it's going through the bespoke workshop, but actually quite quick. Yeah, yeah, no, it's, uh, yeah, no, it, you know, we're hoping that, uh, uh, that it works our way. It depends on how many orders we get. <laughs> it helps keep the team busy, right? I mean, especially, yes. you know, during this period where you probably haven't been developing too many new bespoke lasts. Uh, I mean, it's important to kind of have this to help, you know, kind of smooth out, uh, you know, the bumps of uh, you know the bespoke pipeline. Yeah, no, it, it, I think it's quite healthy to have a mixture in the bespoke department as well, um, because you know last development takes a long time, you know, and going through the fitting process takes a long time. So, um, you know, um, like as we mentioned before, there's certain customers that probably uh, don't like the weight with a full bespoke shoe, uh, and to the same respect, there are some orders that. Uh, um, that it's nice to, for us to put straight into work uh, when you know that the customer has a last and a fitting that, that, that fits him well. So. Well, that's exciting. Well, there we go. So that's another, uh, another exciting kind of expansion of the Gassiano and Girling lineup to look forward to. What else? Um, well, last, I mean, we actually do have probably another two or three developments, but uh, they're just not developed enough to kind of show on camera at the moment. So, um, you know, we... Um, uh, we'll probably hold back on that and maybe speak to you again in a few months when, when that's ready. Um, but one thing we have been working on, which um, is, is, is finished, but not, we haven't released it yet, is, um, is a Goodyear welted golf shoe. So yeah, I mean, this, this, this golf shoe is, uh, the leather's slightly different to what we normally use. Uh, it's actually a treated leather that has uh, oils impregnated into it to kind of give it some kind of water resistance. Um, and, and so is the sole as well. So the sole is actually treated with oil to, uh, to penetrate into the leather to kind of help uh, prevent the water from coming in. Uh, both the upper and the sole, they both have a membrane uh, in between uh, to kind of help with that kind of water resistant. Uh, and although this is not the kind of sh shoe that you would probably wear when it's, it's pouring down a rain on the golf course, uh, there's still an element of people that play golf um, early and, uh, you know, there's a certain dew and uh, wetness of grass uh, that, um, 
um, you know, uh, that it needs to stand up to. So, I mean, me, this, this day and age, you know, a lot of golfers go for sneakers uh, and uh, the, the, the typical ones, but we know that there's a niche market to the guys that really like to dress fancy and look good on the golf course. Um, and, uh, and I think this is, this is part of the answer. Why this, miss an opportunity we, we, to dress up ever? Yeah, exactly. You know, and, uh, you know, golf, you know, it's, uh, there are some very snazzy dresses in, in the golfing world. So, I mean, that's our standard St. Jay, uh, St. Andrew's model as well. And the kilty tongue actually is detachable. So if the customer decides that he doesn't want it on, we just take it off and, um, you know, it, uh, and it comes off. Yeah. And of course, the kilty it, being it, there to kind of help protect the laces against water also. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, so, yeah, no, it's uh, um, that's one of our developments as well. So well, exciting. I mean, you know, I'd love, um, you know, we were actually speaking uh, about, you know, adding some additional kind of casual shoes, you know, to my wardrobe as I'm, you know, I was just in Cabo San Lucas enjoying, you know, kind of some nice, you know, blue skies and some warmer weather. And I've kind of been going through this little exercise right now of, you know, kind of developing out my or building out my casual wardrobe and, you know, truly casual of like shorts and, um, you know, linen uh, shirts and, uh, yeah. uh, you know, adding an appropriate pair of shoes like the Capri uh, that you have in a really nice, um, slightly more colorful suede is next on my list. Yeah, no, I think that would be, uh, I actually saw some of the pictures of, of you on holiday and I think that would go with some of the outfits that you wear perfectly. Yeah, so that is, so, uh, that is, I think, up next on kind of, you know, after having been locked down and unable to travel, I think we're all ready to, you know, kind of bolt out of the gate and get out there uh, as quickly as possible, as quickly as it's safe, of course, uh, but to do so yeah. uh, in good style because, you know, there's only so much mulling around home in shorts and warm-ups that I think even the most sane of us can handle, um, you know, yeah. much less those of us that really enjoy to dress. Yeah, no, definitely. I, I, um, I can't wait for a bit of sunshine. <laughs> well, it's so great to yeah. see you guys back in the shop and open and, and welcoming customers in. Uh, of course, you know, if you're not able to travel to London, you know, Gaziano's got an exceptional website and a great Instagram. And uh, I would imagine, you know, customers can still place orders online if they're not able to actually make it there in person. Yeah, they can. And uh, if anybody uh, is interested in any of, the, any of the shoes that we've just talked about, you know, please feel free to, to, to email us and, uh, you know, to discuss, you know, how we can help you with those as well. Well, send Dean uh, my regards. And um, it's great seeing you back uh, in the shop. It's great to see Savile Row back open. Uh, and of course, anyone that is um, in and around the London area, you know, drop by the Gatione and Girling store uh, on Savile Row. Yeah, no, it'd be an absolute pleasure to see you. Yeah, thank you so much, Tony. And uh, All right, Kirby. hope to see you in person before long. But until then, uh, great checking in. Yes, likewise. And uh, thanks again for including us. So as we continue our trip down Savile Row, uh, you know, we step inside of London, one of London's most historic uh, bespoke tailoring houses, and actually the first one to be on the row, uh, and that is uh, Henry Poole. Simon, uh, it's so great to see you back in the shop, and I can't even imagine the relief it is to have the doors open and again able to continue uh, Poole's legacy of serving its clients to the highest standards. Absolutely, Kirby. Well, it's lovely to see you again, and thanks again for having me on. Uh, it's great to be back. It's great to be open again. As people know that they have been conti uh, contacting us throughout the, the actual lo lockdown, but nevertheless, to have the door the fully opened again on the front two doors and people walking in has been fantastic. So we've already seen uh, a couple of clients this morning. We've got more this afternoon. And later on this week, we've got some new clients coming in, which is always fantastic news. Yeah, well, that's great to kind of see uh, things, you know, getting off to a robust start. I mean, of course, I mean, you guys have been working this entire time serving your existing bespoke clients and I'm sure working on new projects. But again, having those doors open, uh, even if it's just to, uh, you know, the British uh, clientele and, and not international customers yet, is a, a still a pretty significant step forward given uh, just how bad it was there for a while. It has been very tough, I must say, and thanks to our customers, though, being even international, they've been ordering fabrics, uh, sending the fabrics to them, they've been ordering the garments, 
Actually, with the UK guys, the last two or three weeks, I've had one or two tailors back working on the garments. So we actually, now the UK guys are coming in this week and next week, so we can continue making the garments. But as for the other garments uh, for USA, uh, Europe, Japan, they're actually at the back here, ready to be rolled out once we know from the government when we can travel. Uh, as of May 17th, we'll get some sort of guideline. And then we can bring back those co coat makers and trouser makers to bring into the fact of making those garments. That's the plan. That's the plan. Well, that's great. And I know that, you know, uh, Pool has been uh, running uh, kind of a rare promotion to kind of help, you know, keep things, you know, really moving forward here. Uh, can you talk a little bit about that? Because, you know, it's an interesting uh, opportunity, really, uh, for clients to, um, you know, to acquire uh, some interesting pieces and expand their wardrobe. Sure. Well, we had a great promotion with a lovely house making a, a lambswool and cashmere. And this this was very much uh, in the fall last year, went through to spring now, and it's still available, it's still out there, it's 15% discounted off a lambswool and cashmere jacketing range. Um, so that's been a su totally successful, a lot of customers ordering that. And that's still going till the end of this month. And then we're going to do a lovely promotion, basically, on the situation of a, of a type of fabric. I, I strongly believe that spring, summer is going to be very relaxing, but also in a good way. So as you recall, we did a nice feature on this super construction, super summer lightweight construction and we're going to bring out a, a fabric of a blend of linen silk and wool so many houses that will be doing it as you know there are many merchants who do linen silk and wool I've collaborated with them to, to combine this sort of feature on linen silk and wool and I'll be doing a feature later on around 26 of the month um, about you know the best of the best of the linen silk and wools and again with 15% off that range too so that's something exciting for customers again with this super lightweight construction yeah, absolutely. And that's, um, you know, again, kind of a, it was a totally new construction method for pool uh, and really quite, you know, still unique even on Savile Row of really kind of taking those lighter fabrics and marrying it with, you know, a construction that, uh, that really, you know, allows those uh, properties to really be felt through the garment. It's still very much in keeping, though, know, the actual pool look with the sleeve head, the nice natural shoulders. Uh, but just to really to wear, it just feels a lot lighter and a lot more easier. And it breathes because of the half lining in the, in the center back of the jacket, which is nice. But, you know, customers who've already tried it or did try it a little bit have so thoroughly enjoyed it. And they're moving it into suits as well because they've become a summer weight suitings. It's also possible for this kind of construction. So it's a, a definite uh, alternative look. Uh, or feel rather than it is uh, the look is the same but the feel is different yeah well that's it's interesting as we've spoken to a lot of the other uh you know uh shops on uh, Savile Row and German Street and Piccadilly Arcade you know it's interesting I mean you know having been stuck at home for such a long time I think so many of us are really looking forward to that first opportunity uh, to get on an airplane and travel to the beach or so, to some fairer climates. <laughs> and so I think it's, you know, it, it gives pause for an opportunity to really consider one's wardrobe in terms of whether or not, you know, we've got the, the right garments to do that in a smart way. Kirby, what can I say? It's, you know, over a year without traveling to America, all our customers in San Fran to New York to Atlanta, we miss them dearly. And, and of course, you know, we've been talking backwards and forwards with each other, but there's nothing more than being personal out there and, and you know, for them to coming over here too. So we're really strongly going to miss that. And you know, that's part of the service. That's part of the whole thing is that, is that niche of craft that we work together with a customer and what we give the depth of quality that goes into something personally made to them. So it's, it's what you miss. And that's you know, in any part of luxury, um, you know, that's what it's part of, really. Well, certainly I feel like the backbone of, of, of the bespoke craft is that personal relationship and mm -hmm. you know only through you know these true heritage british firms like pool and um you know i mean uh, edward green and gatian and girling and uh, floris i mean are, are you finding mm -hmm. you know that true british service uh, and um you know married together uh, with the quality tr tradition and craftsmanship uh, that you find in the products that they um you know, they really have built their their whole firms around yeah, I mean, a lot of these firms go back a way long way. I think Edward at uh, Floris, I mean, he's, I think, around seven or eight generations as well. So Nine. You know, this is a, exactly, and that's very special with him. And I, we know each other and the Love family, and it's all these families that are out there that have this heritage behind them that survive because of they see the next generation coming in from the p client base. Uh, and they learn about them and they, the, the small details that, that, that each person wants and expects. And, and once you have that, you, you build on it. And 
Don't forget these guys behind me here, which normally would be here, you know, they, they have knowledge about fabrics, they have knowledge about construction, they have knowledge about detail, and that goes into the next suit, and every time that is, is driven into the, to the cutter and also to the coat maker um, on that one customer. And it's very much the love between those two that work together. So, you know, that's a joy. It's like a little club here. You come in and you, you have the ambience where you just feel at home and relax, and that's what Paul's all about. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, that, again, you know, that level of service is really difficult to really explain. I mean, one almost has to experience it to see, you know, just uh, how different it is than a normal, uh, you know, a normal transactional experience. And, you know, that's what uh, Pool and, you know, much of Savile Row and German Street uh, has, have really mm -hmm. been providing. And it's so uniquely British, uh, in my opinion. It's going to be it's going to be a tough, long ride. I think we still got a lot to go there with Kirby. I think, that, you know, let's face it. Um, until you guys can travel too, that you know, many of the restaurants, many of the hotels, you know, the Connaught Claridges, Browns, you know, all these places um, are going to be struggling uh, to get some sort of normality. So I, I still think that you know, come July, we're going to see that start of people coming over. I've already had one or two Americans planning trips over, but it's going to be a, a lot off target. And even if I come to, to see our customers in New York, there's a lot of New York customers who are still presiding in Florida or Wyoming and may remain there um, for, for a good part of the summer months and be back in September, October, I think. Well, I, I, I couldn't agree more that I think that, you know, it's going to be a slow thaw, uh, hopefully beginning sometime, you know, this summer. Uh, I think that, you know, by the time we round the corner on September, um, you know, with the vaccination rollouts and uh, everything hopefully really stabilizing by then, you know, we'll really see things opening up, you know, to be a little bit more normal and, and kind of what we knew it to be like. I mean, I think that it's a critical, you know, for those that really appreciate quality craftsmanship and tradition, uh, to really reach out and support, you know, their favorite houses. I mean, it's only, you know, through the support of, of customers uh, that uh, these houses are really going to be able to kind of exit out of this, uh, you know, uh, you know, uh, in any, you know, kind of strong fashion. And so, um, it's great to see you guys open for business. It's great to see you guys really kind of innovating uh, and able to work with people at a distance, um, mm -hmm. kind of incorporating technology into that. Uh, but I think that for those that, you know, really, you know, want to see this craft uh, continue to thrive and uh, exit the other end of this, it's essential to continue to support uh, those businesses. Yeah, I mean, must admit, Kirby, you know, I'm standing here with about 27 people in the building here normally. And, uh, you know, I'm down to probably at the moment around six or seven, and that's where we are right now. And that's based upon the UK market only because it's all we can actually physically see. So that's, as you said earlier on, the big part is the overseas players. And that's where, you know, the America, the great Americas have always been part of pool. And we were going back in the steamboat days. You know, this is a, the, the journeymen that would go out there for a month that used to come back with order and then they would come over and fit. And it's still very much that market for us. So, you know, realistically, we're running around at 35, 40 percent total market is the USA. So, you know, everything is appreciated. If I can help uh, send you patterns, send anyone patterns, uh, pre-think what you need. Customers have their, we have their pattern. We can be ready for you, ready for the trip. So it's all the time we're trying to think of things. And I think with the bespoke process, the more you can kind of think ahead a little bit, you know, the better, because there yep. is work that you can do uh, to prepare things to help, you know, turn garments out a little bit faster than uh, normal yeah. or, you know, to just get things ready. The joy with a, with a good tailor is that basically we have fabrics all year round. You know, there's no season with us, so you can choose a spring weight in the middle of winter. You can choose a winter weight in the middle of summer. And that's often what people don't realize is that, you know, people don't necessarily come for the season. They come for a purpose and they choose something for travel. They choose something for luxury. If it's a wedding or an anniversary or if it's a, an award ceremony, you want to look your best. You know, it doesn't matter when you want to choose. You can be any time to come into pool and you've got, you know, 4,000 fabrics just, behind, just to the side of me here to look through. Not that you need to see all of them, <laughs> but you can certainly see a few that we can narrow it down and make life easy for you. Well, that's where the expertise a of a great tailor comes into play is that knowledge of fabric and being able to draw on, you know, a body of over 4,000 uh, fabrics to make, you know, very appropriate and very concise recommendations. Yeah, and that comes with the team and the staff here that they've experienced that and the knowledge is, you know, far by most more than other places where you just seem wandering around endlessly thinking, what do I need? But, you know, that's where our knowledge helps you, basically. Well, one of the things I've always appreciated about Pool, and, uh, and honestly always been a little bit 
surprised by, I mean, in a, in a real positive way, is how, you know, you're able to maintain one foot, you know, squarely, uh, you know, seated in tradition and quality and craftsmanship uh, and that heritage that you get from a, pool, a firm like Henry Poole, uh, while still, you know, having another foot, you know, a little bit, you know, kind of on the cutting edge, always working on mm -hmm. new projects, you know, like this lighter weight, uh, you know, construction and these fabrics, you know, doing mm -hmm. something new. Uh, what else have you been working on kind of uh, over the last, you know, several months um, or year uh, that uh, we have to look forward to? Well, I tell you what, Kirby, it's good timing in some respects, but believe it or not, you know, there is another element to us and we're always looking for innovation. And we've worked with some unusual brands. I mean, my father did Dax Simpson back in the day in the 70s. Uh, I worked with Adidas, as you know, on a sneaker. Uh, we've worked with Canada Goose. And then this time, about last year, we were introduced as a, as a house to work with a, a technology fabric. Someone, someone who, who really uh, is out there on the pinnacle point of the edge of cutting edge of, of cloth. And in fact, it goes back to the roots of the great Gore family. So we're talking about Robert Gore of the Gore-Tex family, originally from the DuPont, learned his, uh, you know, his trade there and came up with an innovation of, of technology fabrics for weatherproof fabrics. So we were lucky enough to meet with them. We torn with the idea of how we could work with them. So we knew we had to be something on the edge. And that's what we've come up now. So basically it's what we call the travel trench. And uh, it's going to launch uh, actually next uh, Monday, the 19th. And I can share with you a little sneak about it. I can't say too much about it. But uh, it basically takes a nod to the livery side of what we do for Her Majesty. And then plus also the civil side in the, in the, involves a little bit of a tailcoat cut. But imagine that in a travel trench. It's ideally a waterproof material. It looks elegant. It looks rich and it's available in a grey and it's available in a, in a navy blue. So that will be out, uh, as I say, next week, Kirby. And I can send you a little something so you can see on that. It's made from a Gore-Tex Gore fabric, so I would imagine it has a heightened degree of uh, uh, water resistance. Oh, completely. I mean, it's a waterproof fabric. The technology is in the fabric and we've just made it into this travel trench. So really it sort of, you know, does its purpose, and it, but it looks elegant. You know, sometimes travel trenches look rather voluminous and rather big and there's no shape to it, but it's got lots of little details to it and you'll see that in the, in the sneaky pre previews. Uh, but it goes into things like cell phones, it goes into things like business passes when you need to get into your firm and you just want to tap your way through. So it, it's a lot of little details and it comes with a cap, there's a travel bag, it's all coming out and that will be, we're sort of singling out as a, uh, a, a subdivision of pool, I suppose you call it. Um, so it's an additions, and that's what we're, yeah. we're calling this. So it's another angle to what yeah. pool can do. And it really is the devices from Alex and uh, some of the cutters that, you know, lockdown brings a bit of imagination and design. And uh, they've been playing with these designs and making them up. And, uh, you know, we've been working with Gore-Tex and... Uh, yeah, it's been a fabulous, fabulous year, and now we're going to present it. Well, that's exciting. So is this a product that will be available uh, exclusively bespoke, or, you know, if a client was, you know, located around the world and just wanted a standard kind of 38 or 42, is that something you could make? Absolutely, Kirby. So this, this is based upon a lineage of, of sizing. So now we're going to have like a regular from a 34 to a size, I think it's a 48, and they'll be available in uh, short, medium, and long. Um, and that's the sort of given size. So if you're six foot two, you know, six foot four, that'll obviously be the, be the long version. And then obviously, you know, five, five, ten would be the shorter version. And that's the kind of thing we'll be doing. So they'll, they'll be, you, you'll, you'll be able to sort of, you know, just call up and order it and, and uh, take a delivery. Take about, each one's individually made and they take about four weeks to make. So um, is this still be, made on the pool premises? No, this is now made British made. It's a British made manufacturer. Because of the technology side of it, that's something, you know, we're handwork. We're much more handwork. We need technology-based ma machinery and a manufacturer to work with. So we have, under the umbrella with Gore-Tex, we work together with certain houses, and that's where we met, came up with this plan behind it. But it's been a joy working with them, and their technical side is very good. So that, in the end of the day, the product looks really sharp. Yeah, well, that's exciting. I mean, it kind of, again, you know, marrying, you know, the history, uh, the knowledge, and the tradition of pool mm -hmm. uh, <coughs> with, with these cutting-edge fabrics. I mean, you know, you really just don't see that very many other places. So uh, hats off to you and your team uh, for constantly kind of pushing uh, the limit uh, and the barrier. Um, 
Well, you know, moving on to a slightly more sensitive subject. I mean, of course, our deepest condolences, you know, here uh, from mm-hmm. America for uh, the passing of uh, His Majesty the the Duke of uh, of Edinburgh. I know that you know you guys do a lot of work with the royal household, uh, you know, mm-hmm. providing the livery. Uh, I mean, any insights into kind of what that means, um, you know, for you all, you know, this next week and kind of supporting uh, any services, the funeral of the of the Duke? We are working with the Royal Household on certain aspects of that, um, Kirby, I must say. Um, it is obviously a tragic uh, part of the news that came out. And, uh, you know, we will hear more as we go through this week, ready for preparations. Um, but obviously, what you know, you have to look back on a life that he achieved and the sort of grandfather of our nation here as, be, as he's become known as. But you never know a man that really put in so much of his own vigor into anything that he did and also support, which he, he did for Her Majesty. And I think that's something that, you know, in a lifespan of anyone to do anything uh, is a quite something and commendable. So hats off to him. And uh, obviously our thoughts are with the family right now. And, uh, you know, we'll be there uh, what, we ca- what we can do at Henry Poole. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, it's unbelievable. I mean, uh, you know, just a few months shy of 100 years and uh, 70 mm-hmm. plus of them, you know, with the queen by her side uh, is really such a remarkable legacy. I mean, certainly cut from cloth that I just don't think they make anymore. It would be a tough one to, to you know, repeat on that sort of center stage. If you think about his sports days and hockey and cricket, then going to the naval career, you know, back in the Second World War, you know, facing off, you know, uh, battles in that period of time in Italy, and then moving on to the royalty side and having the vigor to stand and be strength behind all the commitment they had to put on, and yet in his own field came up with his own little device that really was him, and, and I think that was from his school days that he came up with the Duke of Edinburgh Award that really has gone from generation to generation, and uh, you know, certainly was around when I did, did. I didn't do it at my school, but my two sons have done the Duke of Edinburgh Award, and for them it was an enlightening moment to, to really challenge themselves on, on things given to them and tasks that, you know, many youngsters here in the UK really have followed up with um, and they're all devised by him in his years. Yeah, unbelievable. Well, anyway, well, uh, excited to see uh, Pool back open and Savile Row, you know, bustling with activity. And um, yeah, so uh, thrilled to see the doors open and hopefully, you know, we'll be traveling uh, to London soon and you vice versa here to the United States and around the world. Uh, but until then, what's the best way for clients to, to get in touch? Or if someone's a new client and interested in maybe doing something for the first time, can they still reach out over the phone or via email? Yeah, so if you wanted to contact us here at Henry Poole, it's very easy. Uh, my personal email is simon at henrypool.com. You have the website of www.henrypool.com. And, you know, you can phone us. We're here. Um, we're happy to take calls. We're happy to answer questions. If there's any thoughts behind what the difference is between pure bespoke and bespoke and custom made, we're happy to answer those questions. What goes into a, a pure pool suit, what the look of a pool suit is, and why and how long they last, because that's part of the reason also that's special about, you know, having pools making suits here. Yeah, the longevity is, uh, is just without question. Uh, well, you've always been so generous with your time. I don't want to take any more of it because I know you have uh, appointments throughout the rest of the day. Uh, but it's so great to see you back in the shop, uh, your doors open. And, uh, you know, may, you know, the rest of uh, 2021 be a robust year for all of us. Thank you, Kirby. Much appreciated. And you too. And I say, look, out, look forward to be across the pond. It's not that far. It's a few hours. But it won't be long before we're back into our norm again and uh, say thanks to all your audience as well. Very kind. Cheers. Thank you so much, Simon. So continuing down Savile Row and hanging a left at Clifford Street, we are now entering uh, Anderson and Shepherd's Haberdashery, uh, which is uh, kind of the latest uh, development uh, kind of in that brand's rich history. Uh, we're here with uh, Emily. How are you, Emily? Uh, I guess welcome back. And it's got to be so great to have the doors back open. Thank you so much, Kirby. Yeah, it's wonderful to be open again. We've already seen some of our regulars have popped in to say hi and the streets buzzing and the sun is shining. So yeah, we're feeling very, very fortunate. Yeah, I think spring is definitely at uh, uh, all of our uh, feet for sure. And uh, you know, what better way uh, than to uh, to kind of celebrate the reopening of London 
uh, with a little bit of a, a springtime uh, climate and, and sunshine. So, uh, you know, of course, I mean, Anderson and Shepard has been around uh, for uh, such a long time. I mean, it's a cornerstone of Savile Row and the bespoke tailoring industry. I'm just curious that over this last year, uh, whether or not you might have kind of an interesting vantage point of how one's wardrobes really kind of have maybe changed or uh, evolved uh, over, you know, what's been a, a pretty different year for most of us. Yeah, I mean, definitely. We've really seen a shift away from obviously the traditional office wear of the formal suiting with the shirt and tie, really kind of the suited and booted look was kind of instantly no longer required. So um, to start with, with the real kind of full lockdown, our linen pajamas were a huge hit, um, which I've actually got a pair, which I can show you here. I've been a huge fan of linen pajamas. I think a man can never have too much linen in his life. And so that's been something that you guys have really developed just uniquely this last year? Yeah, we've had them um, in the shop available for some time now, but I think men were just really looking for something because we had the weather as well. We were very fortunate in the UK. We literally got locked down and then the sun came out the next day. Um, so our customers needed something lightweight, but that still looked elegant. They could open the door to, well, the postman, because that's all you're allowed to see, um, or, you know, do a Zoom call in something that looked smart it's still you know it has a collar it's quite functional because there's two pockets but they're also very comfortable um i think they were maybe kept on all day and into the evening initially um, and then we started to see a shift towards uh, our knitwear which really became an item that because you can dress it up or down so easily you know you can have a lovely fine knit, knit crew neck which looks lovely on its own you can pop a shirt underneath it still looks really smart for for a zoom call or, or just feeling kind of good about yourself around the home i think self-care became really important for people especially as the lockdown went on and on so we found our customers just wanted to feel good uh, well, during the day they didn't want to kind of just slob around feeling a bit kind of grungy so yeah we ended up uh, seeing a lot of traction on our knitwear sales and I think going forward there'll definitely be less polarization in the wardrobe so we're not going to see this extreme kind of very tailored look and then very casual at the weekend I think well, we think it's going to be more central guys will probably end up wearing something to the office maybe separate so go for the jacket and trouser separates with a beautiful sweater underneath that can then take them through to a restaurant or a bar in the evening. Um, so yeah, that's, it's been really interesting for, for us kind of seeing the, the evolution of the wardrobe and a focus on the more casual elements, but that still can be worn in a formal manner if required. Versatile pieces. Well, I think that's an interesting kind of point uh, that you make there, which is that, you know, uh, it's traditionally been very easy to neglect one's casual wardrobe, especially like, you know, lounge wear and like weekend casual. Right. I mean, separates is a whole separate issue. Uh, but, you know, really, you know, as one kind of goes down the ladder, I mean, they're formal business wear, formal wear, business casual. And, you know, by the time, you know, you get to what you're wearing on the weekend or, you know, kind of lounge wear around the house, either you've exhausted the budget or you just you haven't really thought much about it. And uh, I think one of the things that this past year has certainly done is it's forced us, you know, into that area of our lives so much more. And if you're someone that enjoys Anderson and Shepard bespoke tailoring or quality craftsmanship and tradition, you know, you don't want to be spending time, you know, at home, uh, you know, in anything that is uh, really any different than what you would be spending at work, at least in terms of quality. Absolutely. Absolutely. And I think there'll still be a demand for the tailoring. Um, our bespoke shop this morning has been, they've been rushed off their feet. We've got so, lots of new customers and people who've, I think, had the time to research as well. You know, it's, um, I think a lot of the tailors on Savile Row have spent time improving their websites, improving the availability of information, and customers have had time to properly invest into exploring what kind of cut might be right for them. Because everywhere is different. I mean, you know this better than anyone, Kirby, but you go into a house and every house has a different feel, every house has a different cut. And we always recommend that when customers come to Savile Row, go into all of them, have a chat with everybody. You know, you should, you should feel it when you walk in, you should feel that it's you. And when you find the right tailor, it's a relationship that lasts forever. So, you know, that's one of the great things about the haberdashery. We hope to introduce people to 
our, our bespoke shop as well through the pieces that we have on offer. Um, I'm sure you've noticed before when you come in, we have jackets made at Audi, our creative director works with the bespoke team. Um, and we have pieces here that maybe are slightly brighter in colour or they're a different material. For example, we've got some beautiful corduroy suits in the window at the moment, which have really been kind of piquing interest. I think that's also an item that will, um, going forward, will become quite popular. You know, the corduroy suit, it's extremely practical, but perhaps not a cloth that people would think of as a first choice for a suit. But you can wear it separately, you can wear it with a sweater, you can wear it with a collarless shirt. You know, it's a great look. Yeah. How have um, how have you seen kind of customers, you know, moving in between the haberdashery and the bespoke shop? I mean, does that uh, street go both ways and that you have people that first walk in and discover the haberdashery because maybe they're looking for something slightly more casual uh, and then they're, you know, kind of introduced to the quality and just aesthetic of Anderson and Shepard and then go and are referred out to the bespoke shop? Or is it, uh, you know, the other way around where you've got, of course, this huge book and history of bespoke clients that are now coming to visit the haberdashery to take care of you know, what they're wearing on the weekend or, uh, you know, slightly more casually? That's, yeah, exactly. It, it goes both ways. You know, obviously we had our um, core bespoke customers who, when the haberdashery first opened, would pop round. We have a selection of, you know, ties and pocket squares, uh, a few of our accessories available in the bespoke shop and for a more kind of expansive range, then the bespoke shop guys would come, would lead a customer around here and then they could explore what else we had to offer. I think it's a bit of an Aladdin's cave, you know, you come in initially and kind of start tentatively looking around and once you explore the whole shop you realise just how much there is on offer. Um, but equally, you know, our windows often reflect, as I've said, our bespoke pieces, which will pique a customer's interest who maybe hadn't considered the bespoke shop for, for a piece of tailoring. Um, and then it's, it's a lovely link and I think the idea would be going forward, you could buy your, all of your tailoring from our bespoke shop and we kind of cater for the, like the, the, you know, the weekend wear and the more off-duty office look. But again, it's, it's mix and match, isn't it? You, you kind of, you get a bit from everywhere. Yeah, how have, um, I mean, how have you guys adapted over the last year, uh, you know, to continue to serve your clients around the world that uh, haven't been able to actually travel to London? Um, you know, how have you been working with them? So we've been doing a lot through email. Um, we've been available, we've had a small team in every day. So we've had a lot of initial inquiries um, we've had our existing customers just contacting us either over the phone or, or over email. Um, we've sent out um, cloth packets, so making suggestions for just thinking about you know, future orders. We've sent out linen samples and tweed samples through the winter, which I know the Bespoke Shop have been doing as well. Um, the Bespoke Shop have been in constant communication with their customers too. So. It, and what's been lovely is that every time we've reopened after our multiple lockdowns, uh, we've had such a wonderful warm response and our customers have been really excited to come back in. Because we do genuinely love seeing them, you know, just for a tea and a chat. We don't expect everyone to come in and buy something every time they come in. We just, we like that they feel relaxed and can come in and have a browse, maybe get inspiration or see something they like that they can think about. Um, but yeah, we, we just enjoy spending time with them. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, I think if, if there's one thing we've missed more than anything else, it's the opportunity, you know, to really kind of develop and nurture those personal relationships that I think in some ways are so unique to British retail. I mean, you know, Emily, you've been at Anderson & Shepard, the haberdasher, I think for as long as it's been open, you know, which has been several yes. years now. And it's, you just don't see that level of continuity uh, and expertise um, you know, really outside of London. I mean, it's such a unique part of British retail, I think. Yeah, it's, it's, uh, that's what we want. You know, we want our customers to, to, to kind of to maintain a relationship with us and feel that they can trust us. You know, we don't want to suggest items for them that we don't think will work. Uh, we want them to, res you know, respect our opinion and ask for our opinion. And when something new comes in that we think they'll like, you know, we'll send them a picture of it or, you know, s send them an email and say, oh, you know, this has popped in. We thought you might like it. Um, again, just for what we stock, as you know, is meant to last for a long time and it's meant to create a capsule wardrobe that you can or mix in with your existing pieces that you already have, but also build on every year. We try and release new colours in certain items, but because we're not trend-led and we're not seasonal, we have our collection all year round. 
Um, we try and reflect what's going on with the weather outside rather than this kind of, you know, very strict January to June, June to December. We will have our knitwear and our overcoats available in the middle of July. They might not be out on the shop floor because that's when the linens come out to play, but they're always here and available for our customers. Yeah, well, great. Well, it's so great to see uh, you guys back in the shop uh, to see uh, you know, everyone kind of back, uh, you know, really kind of in business, uh, almost as normal, not quite there, but um, uh, we're getting close. And again, as I've said, I mean, it's it's certainly a significant first step in the right direction. Uh, that is exciting. Uh, hopefully, I'm sure for those in London and England, uh, but even for uh, those of us that aren't able to be there right now, it's certainly an indication that we soon will be able to travel to London and uh, come see all of our favorite uh, destinations. Well, we very much look forward to seeing you as well, Kirby, next time you're in London. Well, please send my regards to the team, and it's so great to see everything that uh, that you all are working on. And, um, you know, best wishes for hopefully is a, uh, a successful day and week, and I'm sure everyone's very excited to be back. Well, thank you very much, Kirby. So in a, in a real sign of just how things are really turning a corner in London, uh, here we've got live footage from outside the Burlington Arms. I mean, this is kind of the pub of Savile Row. It's where all the tailors go to after work. Uh, you know, you can walk into this and, you know, bump into shoemakers, bespoke tailors, uh, you name it. Uh, you know, if they work in and around the Savile Row area, this is kind of the pub of choice. And you can see the queue uh, kind of all the way around the corner. So, you know, if there's one thing I'm probably missing the most of not being there in person, uh, it's probably the pint at the end of the day. And the Burlington Arms would be uh, where I would grab that. So uh, here we are again. Uh, you know, it's kind of a, a new page, fresh leaf, if you will, uh, uh, here in London. And uh, look at all those uh, all those guys, uh, you know, really queuing up uh, for their pint at the end of the day. Well deserved. Uh, but let's walk back up Savile Row. There's one other place that I just wanted to show you that is a really brand new uh, and that is um, the service. So here we are. This is Clifford Street. I think we've got the Anderson Shepherd Haberdashery right there. Uh, the Burlington Arms, I guess, is actually one over uh, and not at the end of Savile Row properly. And so there's a new coffee shop that is being run by the Cat and the Dandy crew called The Service. Uh, and this is um, a really interesting, almost cooperative, if you will, because they're giving a space uh, to various small artisans uh, that are, you know, really too small to rent out their own space uh, on Savile Row proper. They can have small little booths. Uh, it looks like they're closed right now, uh, but, you know, Hawthorne and Heaney, you know, which is a, a, the embroidery a company that does a hand embroidery for much of the row. They've got a small little setup here. Uh, you've got um, you know, the Jotley Fuel, uh, uh, which is uh, a, a shoe shine service. Uh, they uh, have actually just launched a line of dressing gowns. They've got a small little uh, setup there. I think Dominic Casey uh, even has a small little setup there. So uh, it's an opportunity to really encounter and, um, and discover some of these smaller artis artisans uh, that uh, traditionally wouldn't be represented on the road. So it's very kind of exciting development. And then also a great place to grab a cup of coffee uh, or on a normal day, uh, a nice sandwich. So uh, there we are, Savile Row. That kind of concludes, if you will, uh, our London update. You know, today as we were uh, walking in and around St. James's, uh, German Street, the Piccadilly Arcade, and Savile Row to kind of check in uh, with our favorite shops. Uh, as everyone can imagine, it's been a long and difficult year for them. And this opportunity to really reopen uh, on April 12th uh, is a small but very significant step forward in the right direction uh, that I'm sure feels long overdue uh, for everyone in London. Uh, May 17th, the uh, restaurants open for indoor dining. Uh, then hopefully uh, somewhere around that time, we really get a plan on when uh, the country will be opened up for international travel. Uh, if you are someone that really appreciates quality craftsmanship and tradition, I couldn't encourage you uh, any more uh, enthusiastically to reach out to these establishments. You know, they certainly need all of our business right now and support uh, to continue to push through uh, what has been a very difficult time. You know, these, uh, these places are really unique to uh, London and as large as they may seem at the end of the day, really are still quite small businesses. And so uh, the support of uh, good customers like us uh, that really have a passion for quality craftsmanship and tradition is going to be what keeps uh, these firms going forward. 
so there we have it. Uh, let us know what you think in the comments section below. I'd love to hear where you uh, plan on visiting first, you know, once you're able to travel back to London. Uh, otherwise, of course, I am Kirby Allison, and I love to help the well-dressed acquire and care for their wardrobes while exploring the world of quality, craftsmanship, and tradition. Thanks for watching today's London Update.